you want to switch your chairs around so you're facing this way. Ready to fire. Peter Murphy is here. I'm going to get down on the camera. Where are you going to be, Jake? I'll be up to your left. I'm going to down the line. Way down the other end. Out on the, out on the bricks there. This level. I reckon. Oh, this level. Yeah. You've got to use screen for the wrong thing after this one. I think so. Can I just get on your phone and take photos? Do you want to take them on the iPad? Yeah. What do you, what, what's happening? Facing us. You tell us. Facing you? Oh, so it's video and... Radio. Which oh, seat do you want me on? Yes. yes. Which seat do you want me on? Whatever, whatever. Are we sitting, are we? Yeah, yeah. Okay. We're sitting. All right, we're jumping. Sure. Sure. So, yeah, we're in the middle of the road and we're going to be two yeah. balls and high balls. Well, no, yeah. No, high ball, you're fine. We should, we should, we should chuck, chuck me at the end. You want to oh. chuck me at the end? Chuck you at the end. Yeah. 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 I just walked in and said hello. Yeah, I know. <laughs> and, I, and I got your name wrong. I do apologise. It was fun, though, right? <laughs> yeah. 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 Yeah.
Yeah, it right? was under the new lights. And to be fair to Michael, like I wasn't even invited that night. I just walked on in and had a chat. Well, remember? you and so, uh, you, you know. and Andrew just sort of um, <laughs> crashed crashed the uh, crashed our party. Schneider, let's blame him. Schneider, it was Schneider, of course. Hey, you can do whatever you want. You can call the game. You can you just, you, if you tell us to, to, to get out and run oh. run hundred meters and do ten push ups, we'll do it for you. All right. Yeah, <laughs> you don't get a friend of the station. I won't. I won't make you do that. But you know, it was my childhood ambition to be a sports commentator. That's what I wanted to do. So uh, calling a game one day, that would be awesome. Oh. Seriously, something to keep in mind. Yeah. I mean, I might make up some of the terminology. No, absolutely. Uh, given that I grew up with a father who was a rugby league man. But, you know, oh. I've learned a lot. No, I exactly. Sports, sport. Sport, sport. And I think when you listen to commentating and you're a sports lover, it comes off pretty natural, although some might say that's not quite Look, so if you just look after the Michael. small things, the big things will look after themselves <laughs> and you just take it one play at a time, one okay. play at a time. The passion comes I want to know <laughs> what uh, what the process leading up to today for RJ Miles Reserve and... RF uh, and, Miles. Uh, sorry, <laughs> RF Miles Reserve and, uh, and the family. Uh, well, I'm, I actually haven't met the... Um, no family yet and I'm a bit excited to. Yes. Uh, As am I. Yeah. Well, I didn't know this until relatively recently. You know, uh, RF Miles, Bob Miles, um, came out to Australia in the late 19-teens, yep. early 20s, yep. and established a Seaford footy club in 1922 and wow. they were premiers by 1924 with him as the secretary there you go um, and that's just a small part of his contribution to the community so uh, i think i very much hope that his family will be blown away by this amazing read of It's it's completely unrecognisable. I um I was foolish and parked on the other side of the road, so I had to dangerously walk a walk. Uh, yeah, it's a pedestrian the, crossing, right? Correct. Yeah. So um well I miss I missed it. Uh, I missed the crossing, and uh, so I walked down the road. But then when I got to the uh, so I know you can't quite see on camera, but um, when when you get to the the underpass there, and then it's almost in a, a beautiful frame. Yep. Uh, which is obviously with the the brand new pavilion it opens, behind you can us. See the pavilion it's and just stunning. There's people out on the balcony already, yep. possibly having, you know, getting on the beers, as we now Maybe say. Maybe a few beers. <laughs> um, and like the process, it was a bit of a long one. And I remember the cricket club and the footy club talking to the council about needing new club rooms. And obviously a lot was happening with the state government Correct. getting rid of the level crossing. And I remember them coming to me, and I wasn't the member then, I was the candidate, but saying, look, the council said we have to do a lot of advocacy to try to get others involved. Um, and so all of the credit really in the end goes to the clubs because they did it. You yeah. know, they, they did that advocacy, they got their clubs involved, they got the community involved, and then they came to Sonia Kilkenny, the state member, yep. um, who, you know, got all the rest of this magnificent work around here done. Um, and she got on board really quickly, got state government commitment they came to me as a candidate they went to the then federal member for dunkley they got both of us to make a commitment the council put in money and look where we are now um it's just amazing how long was the process supposed to take in the first place mm, i can't remember exactly four years was it yeah and it, <laughs> like four 45 years yeah. I don't know. well it's I been mean, four to, to be fair um my time has really taken on no meaning since um since 2020 yeah, that's yeah, right yeah. um but I know, you know, there was talk about it. I was a candidate for 2016. We don't talk about that very much because I didn't quite win. Uh, <laughs> no. um, and there was talk about it then. And then there was a lot of advocacy in the next two years. Um, and then the money came in sort of in bits and pieces. Um, I feel like this the building part of it went faster than I thought it would. But again, that may just be because most of last year we were locked up. Yep. So the locked down, I should say locked down. Locked down. Appropriately so locked down, yeah. I must say. <laughs> You must say. <laughs> I do say. I do say. So, obviously, just to, to reiterate, I suppose, the community's involvement, uh, there's nothing better than local government, state government and federal government, as well as the community, yep. sporting clubs. It's a, a Really, it's a full house, isn't it? That's and when a full house totally is involved, right. it's it just 
it almost means something a little bit more. Yep. It's not just one. It wasn't you know local government um, having to you know fit the bill or even even really do the heavy lifting. Well, yeah, and it also wasn't as we often see either a state election or a federal election where the candidates sort of went, "Hey, community, this yeah. is what you need, and if you vote for me, you'll get it." it yeah. Literally was Which what is we so cliche. Yeah, and it's what we always say should happen in a way. Yep. It was ground up, bottom up, like the community and the club saying, This is what we want. Now will you get on board yep. and help us? I mean, I think uh, the clubs probably were a bit frustrated um here and there because a lot of the burden was on their shoulders about yeah. trying to get um costings and drawings done, but the value in it was Every single person who was involved at all levels of government, candidates and members, all saw that this is something that the community wanted. Yep. Um, and and needed. And needed. And it fits so beautifully with everything else, as I said, with yeah. the level crossing, with the new playground. Yep. Like you said, you come you come through that it's underpass. Incredible. It and is it's just incredible. Like, wow. Yep. And there is nothing better than being a a politician, or I like to call myself a parliamentarian. <laughs> yes, um, of which you are. <laughs> where you get to sort of say, hey, guys, this is congratulations to you. Yeah. Right? There's no sort of standing up. You know, you won't see Sonia and I going, oh, if it wasn't oh, for no. us, because this is literally the club saying this is what we want and we just were able to help them because they work so hard. I don't think there was any shovel digging or any ribbon cutting or anything involved oh, necessarily. Really? Oh, well, that's a mistake. Really <laughs> Surely someone was on the end of a shovel. Oh, but there's not a big pair of scissors somewhere <laughs> that we should have been a part of. Um, look, there wasn't as much. I mean, maybe that was COVID too. I don't know. That, that could have been a bit COVID-y. Um, but every time we did something, so uh, every like I made an election commitment and any time I have come out here for photographs to about the way it's been developing, yes. there's been players and um, people who are on the committees of the club Correct, yep. out here and part of it. Yes, which was the important. Which is, yeah. I mean, it's just as important because that's 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 what really makes the uh, makes the full house effect, doesn't it, is having everyone involved. That's right. And yeah. everyone's excited and you just look out there like my um, – my husband went and did his shopping, his shopping, our shopping, but he's the grocery shopper of the family at Coles this morning. Yep. Um, and for the five minutes I've seen him today <laughs> between events, yep. um, he said to me, oh, it's, it's the under-19s and it's already packed. Yeah. Like there are going to be so many oh, people the there today. The absolute hype yep. has been sensational. Yep. Uh, it's been a, a massive build-up, hasn't it, Vossi, uh, for 2021. We were supposed to be here last week. Obviously, we didn't quite see, um, see yeah. the end of lockdown, unfortunately. But, you know, what a skip. What, what a fantastic atmosphere already here building uh, where I think in the last quarter of uh, the reserves, it's set to be a fantastic day. Oh, it's going to be a fantastic day and... Um, um, <laughs> you lost for words. No, so no, 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 no. I was just, I was just, I was just going to say I'll just keep it short. Peter Murphy, thank you very much for joining us today and uh, and thank you for your comp- contribution in all of this and, and being a great friend at Artable P. Absolutely. Uh, well, it's not the last time you're going to see and hear me on the show, whether you invite me or not. <laughs> Uh, but thank you for inviting me. And also, we should also say the netball's on today as yes, well. Yes, it most here. certainly is. And they've got new courts as well. And Oh, and the women are playing tonight. Yes. So it's under all, lights. It's all happening. I know the women deserve to get the under lights game. I'm a little bit biased, but, you know, go, <laughs> go the women. Go the women. Absolutely. <laughs> well, Peter Murphy, thanks so much for joining us. Um, boys behind the desk, I'm not sure if we're going to take a quick break or whether we're going to roll straight into uh, straight into something. I'm not seeing any hands. So, uh, yep, we're all good. We might take a quick break and we'll be back with the uh, pre-show MP NFL show. Thanks to uh, TV Magic. Yeah. There's a quiet revolution happening on the rooftops of Australia. And at Solar Heart, we're proud to be leading the charge. One home, one family, one solar panel at a time. Helping smart Aussies make a real difference to the planet, cutting their energy bills and connecting them to their smart energy future. Get smart. Get solar. 
More and more people with a taste for quality are shopping at Eliza Meats. Kevin and his lean team pride themselves on the finest cuts. From juicy steaks and roasts to high-grade mints and sausages, and Eliza Meats are the gourmet specialists. Inquire about Eliza Meats Spit Hire for 9787 4473 for a mouth-watering meal fit for a king. It's all at Eliza Meats. See our sponsor Kevin at Eliza Meats, 112B Mount Eliza Way, a station sponsor. Do you have TV antenna or reception issues? Need to warm out your TV or want extra TV or data points? Then talk to TV Magic, Frankston and the Peninsula. TV Magic are your local TV and antenna specialists. We look after everything. TV, home theatre, satellite, plus all electrical work. Visit us at tvmagic.com.au or contact Clint for a free quote on 0484 395 555. TV Magic, we make all your TV problems disappear. A station sponsor. Brighton Auto is your Bayside and Peninsula automotive one-stop shop. This all-in-one award-winning Mitsubishi, MG and Sanyong dealership is also offering Holden certified parts and service. They have a huge range of new demo and used vehicles plus factory trained service technicians. Your proud RPPFM station sponsor Brighton Auto will also ensure your dream car is well within reach and kept in great hands. Why not visit brightonauto.com.au or find them at 67 Nepean Highway, Elstonwick, LMCT 10680. And welcome back to the RJ Miles Reserve in Seaford. We are live here this afternoon for the match of the day, the TV Magic match of the day between Seaford and Mornington. A few, few minutes to go in the reserves, Seaford up by a point. But we're going to cross out now to speak to Mick O'Neill and give us an update about how the Franks and Dolphins are faring in their match against Collingwood this afternoon. Mick, good afternoon. Hello, Mick. Nothing there at the moment. Yes, you have. Uh -huh. Good afternoon, Mick. How are you going? Not too bad, mate. It's, things are turning ugly here at the Holden Centre for Franks and Collingwood with a 34-point lead just coming up to the 20-minute mark of the third quarter. Uh, they've kicked away after a, a small lead at uh, quarter time, but uh, lots of Peninsula content running around in the uh, Collingwood side going well, like Campbell Husswaite and Sam Fowler. Uh, Brady McLaughlin's kicked uh, three goals. He's the leading goal kicker. In, and the usual suspects, Nathan Freeman, Josh Newman, Connor Riley leading the, the stats. But uh, Collingwood just look a bit slicker and a bit quicker outside of the contest, actually. So I've got some nice AFL talent running around and just proving to be a bit more uh, 
safer with the footy than Frankson have turned the ball over through the middle of the ground too many times today. Well, thank you very much for that update there, and hopefully the Dolphins can turn it around. So we're late in the third quarter. Was it 34 points the margin? 34 points, 20 minutes and 50 seconds into the third. Well, hopefully the Dolphins can turn it around. Mick, thank you very much for your time on RWP FM Match of the Day pre-match. Talk to you soon. Cheers, mate. Ta. You're watching RWP FM on Facebook. We're live. We're at RJ Miles Reserve, and we'll take a break. When you're a big bank, you have big responsibilities, the biggest of which is to do the right thing. It's something Bendigo Bank has always been good at. Bendigo Bank is proud to support AFL Southeast Women's Football. Oh, and welcome back to the um, TV Magic Match of the Day uh, here between Mornington, of course, uh, being hosted by Seaford. Uh, it's just about uh, wrapped up time in the uh, in the reserves, Michael, as uh, Seaford 6-3-39, play Mornington 5-8-38. Wow, we with a minute 23 to go as the scoreboard um as the scoreboard counts down, uh, today's game, Vossi, uh, well, geez, it's uh, we had Sean, uh, Sean, assistant coach from Mornington Football Netball Club on uh, the Topan Football Show this morning, and uh, geez, I know uh, he was he was filled with excitement. You might not have heard it on his voice during the show, but geez, he's very very excited uh, man to be able to be uh, to be out there today, and I know his boys are, are definitely up and about. Uh, it's just an exciting day to be here. 50 seconds to go in the seconds and the ball's still out on that boundary line. So basically, Mornington need to get it out and get it quick, out quickly. We might just uh, might just touch on the last few seconds. Yeah, the ball's out of bounds. There's 36 seconds to go and the clock's still counting. So I think Mornington might uh, come up short in this game. But um, Did you uh, happen to see what the results were for the 19s, Michael? No, I did not. You did not? Um, some of the usual suspects. Look, we saw um, we saw Seaford uh, in round uh, what was round one, a Good Friday game against uh, Lang Warren at Lang Warren, and uh, they were pretty lacklustre, weren't they, Vossi? They uh, they didn't quite get going uh, through uh, the four four quarters of football, and uh, Lang Warren, well, they're the uh, they're the epitome of what is twenty twenty one, and uh, that's a that's a win for Seaford twos. Uh, well. Geez, if it's uh, if it's anything like what the day is going to be, Vossi, that's a, that's a great win for uh, for the for the club. I reckon we might I reckon we might need to get it if we can get a window open. I reckon we might try and do a window open because try and really build the atmosphere. There's certainly an atmosphere outside. You might not necessarily hear it because we're behind closed doors, but hopefully uh, it will come across throughout the afternoon. But what a game it promises to be, and what a star Peter Murphy is. Oh, she's an absolute star, isn't she? And uh, look, I mean, it's always good when you've got politicians on your side, and uh, she most certainly is on RPP's side. Uh, what she's been able to contribute as a politician to uh, a federal politician, that is, to um, to community radio, uh, is is very exceptional. Of course, she's the uh, the MP for Dunkley, uh, the minister. I should say, and uh, for Dunkley, which is sort of Frankston, uh, Frankston and surrounds, isn't it, Bossy? I believe. Yeah, I think coming so. from the Mornington Peninsula, I'm uh, Nepean, of course, so not uh, not much involved there. But she's uh, down there on the sidelines. I can see her down there. She's down there participating in the coin toss down there, and uh, she's, it hasn't stopped working today, has she? No, no, she hasn't stopped working. Uh, she said in the pre-game show, thanks to TV Magic, that uh, that her husband was out doing the shopping. He does all the shopping, and uh, she's been a very, very busy lady today. But uh, later on uh, during our coverage, we'll be talking to uh, Sue Miles, the granddaughter of the great RF Miles, of course. Uh, and for those that don't know, we are currently standing uh, and watching football take place on the RF Miles Reserve. So uh, what a great... Great honour for that family to have a, a ground named after after what what is probably a legend of the club. Well, I'd like um, well, the founding member. We've got we've got a we, we, our family name's got a net named after us, a cricket net named after us at Morning to have a 
to have a whole oval name after you. Like he's uh, obviously a very special man in the history of the Super Football Club. So we look forward to having a chat to his uh, grand- granddaughter. Granddaughter, granddaughter. That's granddaughter. correct. And uh, also, we're hoping, hopefully going to be having a chat to Paul Kennedy as well as the football manager here at Seaford before the game. Um, but uh, yeah, no, we're just waiting for the a big game to get underway this afternoon. I can tell you in the AFL, by the way, that uh, North Melbourne are a goal in front of Gold Coast and Collingwood are, I think, about seven or eight points in front of Freo in the early stages of their games. Vossi Seaford reserves just down below us, our commentary position, which, mind you, we are absolutely in for a treat today. We're behind this beautiful glass um, propped up here in uh, in what would be probably the uh, the best part of the joint, let's be honest, where we are. But, uh, look, I know the reserves have just taken, uh, taken a W, but I don't know, just looking around, it seems to be that uh, they're just... Look, they're, they're happy to be here. Uh, this is their new home. They deserve every bit of it. They've been through the ringer for the last four and a half, five years. Uh, and what I didn't mention either, Vossi, was that um, this was actually a – this was ground zero for a lot of the crossing works in Frankston and on, along the Frankston line. So this was actually a construction site. And uh, what they've been able to do, um, we'll have uh, images coming to you across the uh, the day, of course, we're uh, covering um, – Covering the game will be live on on uh, on Facebook and alike, and uh, some other some other platforms, which I'll uh, I'll share with you in just a minute. But uh, but if you if you get an opportunity, if you uh, if you're stopped and uh, you you're off the wireless and and you have access to a obviously your mobile device or your computer or something, and uh, you haven't been able to make it here today, make sure you do because it's uh, it's quite an impressive quite an impressive venue and uh, very much looking forward to the start of the game. Uh, and I know both clubs, uh, there's a lot of anticipation to uh, to, uh, to to get uh, the, the game going. Vossi, as uh, both clubs have joined us now, Mornington looking uh, Mornington looking a very, very sharp, but uh, Seaford as well. We expect a lot from Seaford uh, today, Vossi, but uh, I don't mind an underdog. I like an underdog very, very much. And Mornington, sorry, Mornington going in as underdogs, you would think. We spoke to Sean Cleary from the Mornington Football Club. We also spoke to Ben Walk, the NFL Aspendale Football Club. And Volatile Vossi was at it again this morning. Volatile Vossi was at it again this morning. And, uh, for... No names are reviewed. And... <laughs> <laughs> He did take centre stage, Vossi, and I've just been told in my ear that uh, that we are welcoming our radio audience for the first time today. So welcome. We have been uh, streaming to you live from Facebook, but our beautiful radio audience uh, via the app and, uh, of course, out and about if uh, 98.7, 98.3 FM on your dial. Uh, so if you are out and about, uh, make sure you tune in and uh, welcome to our radio listeners as uh, the little little guy with the Saints jumper just peering at me through the uh, through the window, going, I feel like I'm in a fishbowl, but uh, it's actually you that's in a fishbowl, young man. Uh, still some photo opportunities out there today. Uh, of course, um, the uh, the Miles family are out there, and Peter Murphy, of course, out there. Both teams going through their paces. Michael, uh, that man with the ball, just having a set shot as we're about to um, as we're about to get underway. Well, surely not. Not for uh, not for a little while, but uh, j- uh, that man in uh, Jackson Calder just going having ping shots at goals. How important is he today for uh, for Mornington, Vossi? Would you say? Oh, very much so. And, uh, we haven't got a seventy-six We haven't got a seventy-six on the list. We might see if uh, we can grab Phil, our great mate um, at the Seaford Football Netball Club. Phil, of course, is the uh, the vice president. Uh, so we'll see if oh. He- Another another long haired lad out there. Oh, that's him, Michael. Seventy six. That's quite uh, quite the haircut. Few uh, mustaches getting around as well. I don't mind a mustache. Um, having one myself uh, attached to a big fat beard. Uh, it's uh, it's the look. It's the look. The urban hipster. I've been told. She does. She would. Uh, she'd murder me actually if I got rid of this thing. Uh, she's. She. I'm her her Canadian lumberjack. She reckons. I've got a couple of red flannels, um, some chaps. That'll be enough of that. 
Yeah, he did. He was uh, he was up and about around, oh, I think it would have been, I heard him creaking, uh, 60 kilos walking around the house. He tends to creak some floorboards and whatnot. So I heard him starting to uh, unsettle around uh, six, around uh, court to six. But um, so I let him in and uh, he was, uh, he was, of course, very, very happy to, uh, to come and, uh, and have a lay down with us in the morning as he does every morning. Uh, some uh, as the uh, we're just being welcomed by the master officiators today. Uh, Michael, does it, do you recognise any of those? Any of those faces? Oh, I think. Okay, we're uh, yep. Uh, we're talking about umpires. Thanks, nipples, but that's okay. Sue Miles, of course. Pardon? Oh, we're going well. Okay, of course. Uh, see if you are, <laughs> if you are, if you are joining us uh, via your uh, device. Uh, we're just meeting, following uh, the coin toss. What's going to take place? Sue Miles uh, wearing the grey jacket, and uh, the Honourable Peter Murphy uh, out there in the blue jacket. Um, they'll be going in to complete the coin toss. She was worried about that uh, that coming out the wrong way. Uh, so she's been practising, but we're joined again by uh, Rowan. It looks like he's one of the officiators today, Vossi, as you're still trying to uh, bring those up. No worries at all. Uh, both teams uh, still going through their paces, some set shots on goal. Uh, the crowd tends to be sort of coming still through from that underpass there. As I mentioned off the top of the show, if you uh, do get a chance to jump on your device, make sure you uh, make sure you do so. If you can't get here today, then uh, jump on and, and take a look at what uh, what Seaford have now because it's pretty bloody impressive. I'll give you the red hot tip. Rowan David is an absolute sure starter because I see him, but I don't recognise the other the other guy. No, so you would ex is that Travis there talking to uh, talking to the uh, one of the guys there in the boat? Anyway, it's not enough for the umpires. Enough for the umpires. Uh, just waiting for the uh, for a few people to uh, gather around the uh, the centre square there. Yeah, well, it's just, I think, a bit of cloud cover starting to come over Vossi, uh, which I think that's going to promote uh, a little bit of a breeze. Not sure what uh, what breeze and where it may be coming from, but um, we will get an indication a little bit later on as uh, what way that breeze is going. I was a little bit late, unfortunately, um, uh, due to some personal reasons. So I haven't had an opportunity to walk out on the ground yet, but uh, just having a look at uh, really where the quickly Vossi and if you don't know Willy Weather uh, it's what all the uh, the master boatsman uh, it's the app of choice uh, it's a very good app may I add uh, if you haven't seen it make sure you jump on and have a look but uh, current wind speed of 31 and a half kilometers uh, and it appears to be a west northwesterly wind so uh, it is going to favor the right of the screen uh, or the right of your dial depending on uh, what stream or where you're listening or whatever the case may be. Uh, we are being met by the captains in the centre of the ground, of course. Great photo opportunity today. And uh, as I said to Sean, assistant coach of Mornington Football Netball Club this morning, it's uh, it's going to go down in history, of course. RF Miles Reserve being uh, played on for the very first time. And Mornington uh, get to share in that. And I believe is that uh, that is, of course, uh, Lockie Sasevich out there, gets to uh, flip the coin as well. So that uh, must be pretty special for you, of course, Pete. No, not really. No, nah, couldn't care less. That's fair enough. Uh, he, he's, she's, she's choking. He's choked up. He's choked up. No, he, he actually... He actually couldn't... <laughs> he actually could not care less at all, Michael. They have won the toss. Seaford, first win for the day. Great photo opportunity here with both captains. Just oh, I've got no idea what uh, what takes place at beaches on a Saturday night, Bossy. If that's the way you cut a rug, mate, you're doing something very wrong. <laughs> a children's game. 
people can't see you, Vossi. They don't know what you're doing with your arms. Yeah, no, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> I think that I should be still in there and getting squeezed out. Uh, it's more, more lockdown. It's uh, very, it's very tight. What's there, Steve? Yes, I know. You, uh, they roll out the red carpet. Wherever you go in Mornington, they roll out the red carpet and just say, uh, the mayor's coming through. You are a predominant figure down there at Mornington, aren't you? Oh, they're all different. So there's, um, I did the uh, jump there, like the uh, the old Toyota jump or the Toyota ads where you used to get there and know what a feeling. Just did out there. So uh, they're having a bit of fun out there. The game's about ready to start and we'll be underway and we'll give you updates. Uh, I think, is Craig going to give us the updates throughout the afternoon? Yeah, Thanks Craig is going to give us... The, uh, the updates, thanks to uh, Solar Heart, as you mentioned, Vossi, scoreboard sponsor today and as every weekend and for the rest of the year, uh, the team at uh, Ray White of Frankston. It's uh, an absolute pleasure to have you on board for 2021 and we look forward to an ongoing future. Now, we've got some exciting things coming in uh, in latter in the latter part of 2021 thanks. with uh, Frankston Studios. Thanks to Solar Heart. Somerville 2, 113, Lang Warren 2 goals. Keringle one behind, Chelsea one straight six, Hastings two straight, Tyre one behind. And we might just have time to get Division One, any Division One update before we get underway here this afternoon. And we will be hearing from Craig o throughout the afternoon regarding that. Bombers two straight, 12, Edifar one behind, Bomb Beach two, one, 13, Red Hills zero. And that is it. And we are underway for this massive game this afternoon. I called it this morning, the winner. Well, the winner, the winner will get a double chance. They probably both will anyhow, but the winner will definitely get a double chance and the loser, well, still favoured to get one as if two games clear of fourth and fourth place top today. So the top four sides actually playing each other. Oh, there you go. That's something we didn't touch on this morning. There's a quick kick inside, attacking 50. Almost a, a diving mark there taken by Seaford in their forward pocket. Mornington trying to work it to the line. And they go in. There's going to be a free kick. Free kick too high. high. And... Mornington will take the free kick down the line, going down towards the half-back line. Trying to pick up the ball there was Tickle for Seaford. Ball right below where we're broadcasting in this magnificent facility here at the Miles Reserve. is an op opportunity for Seaford to get the ball over the top. Rayson's got it. He gets the... Well, there's got a, they're going to have to go back. They are. There's... Uh, the it's not. It would appear the umpire that... Uh, the secondary umpire that wasn't that in like, control. That looks like Jason Hughes out there. Umpiring. For those that don't know Jason Hughes, Michael. Jason Hughes is a long-term umpire at the SUA. As an umpire, uh, he's moved out of the area, of course, but he was a fantastic umpire, Hughes. That does look like Hughes out there. Uh, anyhow, we'll get back to the game. Herbert to have the shot for the first goal of the game. And the first goal here in, oh, I, I won't even guess the days, but I'm going to say somewhere around the 1,800 days. <laughs> At a guess, five years. Eighteen hundred, I guess. Production team, we got any idea of uh, how long that actually is? No. Okay. Three hundred and sixty-five times. Look into that. Times four. Yeah, plus no, 366. You, are, you are extremely good at your maths, so I'll take your word for it. You reckon four years? Oh, well, we said four to five, haven't we? So missed opportunity. Seaford already uh, with an opportunity to uh, put a major on the scoreboard. They're moving the ball really well, from what I can see thus far. Uh, deciding to come over this side of the ground. Um, when I say this side of the ground, the pavilion side of the ground, and uh, Mornington opting to take the far side of the ground as the umpire is about to throw the ball in, uh, which is the train side of the ground, bossy. Yeah, the wind certainly will be. Uh... Something that will affect games here due to the fact of the open nature, but um, we don't mind that. The facilities, we're going to mention them so many times, though, but the facilities are fantastic here. There's a free kick to Seaford, and the free kick's going to go to Braund on centre wing. So he looks to go backwards, and he does go backwards. The mark has been taken there, and it's been taken by Zanecki, who plays on. Oh, oh dangerous it's kick. A bad kick. Mornington will run into the open goal with one bounce. And kicking an easy goal, and that was a steal by James Cameron. So the man they affectionately call Jimmy, he has kicked the first goal of the game, and Mornington are one straight six, and Seaford are one behind, and that is on the Ray White Frankston 
scoreboard. I'm nailing it today. Nailed it. Absolutely nailed it. Oh, look, that's got to be uh, that's got to hurt for Seaford. They weren't able to draw the uh, the first major in uh, in this game today here at RF Miles Reserve, uh, the home of Seaford. Of course, uh, it's a fantastic facility. The grounds looking in pretty good nick. Uh, only new turf, of course, and uh, she's taken well. A little bit chopped up, but you'd expect that with new turf uh, as the ball's wrapped up again in the centre of the ground, only moving about a metre. Rowan to throw the ball up. Does throw the ball up in the centre of the ground. Mornington looking to jump over the top there through the agency there of Walsh. Oh. All picked up there for Seaford and a hand pass. And they, can, they can go forward here through the agency of Broomhead, who goes inside attacking 50 and taking the mark is Fisher on the lead, 45 metres out. If you call that 50 metres, we've 45 out. He's on the left half forward flank just outside the point of the square. So It's not 50, is it? 50 no. metre arc's not 50. You no, have well, it, okay. Well, he's just inside the arc anyhow. So... We're live I reckon he's going to kick from about 45. We're live here today on the uh, RWP Peninsula footy page. You can have a look. You can listen to us. Why wouldn't you? Shot a Beautiful goal. Beautiful kick. It's an answering goal. And there's the cheer. There's the first goal for Seaford in a long time at their spiritual home. They're back here and they're back with a vengeance. They've kicked the goal and fished their first goal. And they're up to 117. And Mornington are uh, one straight six. And that is on the Ray White Frankston scoreboard. You're... You're listening and watching Audible PFM, the voice of Peninsula Football. Do you have TV antenna or reception issues? Need to wall mount your TV or want extra TV or data points? Then call TV Magic, Frankston and the Peninsula. Call Clint for a free quote on 0484 395 555. TV Magic, we make all your TV problems disappear. A station sponsor. And welcome back here to... Seaford and the match between Seaford and Mornington. Mornington went to go into attack, but Seaford with the rebound and they go. They're playing confidently from half back. They, they, just run, they run forward. They run forward in numbers. There's a hand pass over the top looking there and finding his teammate there in Filippone who gets the hand pass back. And now quick kick at goal is going to be across the face and through for a behind. He went for the boo -na -na yeah, he, kick. He most certainly did, but uh, just across the face. Far side point post, just in. Mornington quick to take the ball out, finding a target and does so. Holds the ball up. Quick to play on, though. Still over the other side of the ground. Went looking for Jackson Calder. Jackson Calder just tunnelled under ball there. Seaford gather nicely. Far side of the ground. Half, full, half back flank for Seaford. They're on the switch here, Seaford, as the ball's been marked deep in their back line. Short kick finding... Herbert, Herbert quick to play on, finds Tickle. Tickle with the ball now. He's in a cross back, dangerous kick, drop mark. Seaford, come on, find your targets. And doing so, they don't like that option. So they're switching again over the other side of the ground, which is a railway side of the ground. Seaford with the ball now, looking for options. Long, high kick, you'd expect a big punch here. Seaford, something from nothing, gathers the ball, goes inbound, looking for Ravenhall. Ravenhall couldn't quite get his hands on it. Quick snap out of the pocket. Goes through for a minor. Vossi, gee, something building there from nothing. It's been what this year has been about. And in fact, the last 12, 18 months has been something from nothing, isn't it? Just depends what you make from it. The ball's being retrieved back from the uh, the young tackers at the back there. So oh, for the one giving three it to nine. his little brother. How cool is that? Morning to one straight six. And that is on the Ray White Frankston scoreboard. We're live here thanks to TV Magic. And we've got that magnificent meat tray from Eliza Meats to give out at the end of the day. The best on ground as voted by us, short pass. Of course, voted by us. And uh, Although, we, never, we never get an invite to their barbies, do we? No, nah, we don't. We really we should. Don't. We should. We should. Although, um, funny, we uh, we mentioned the uh, Eliza Meats match, uh, sorry, uh, player of the day, uh, best on ground last week. Uh, he, took the, uh, he took the meat tray. 
didn't he? And uh, he said uh, the boys at the fishing trip will absolutely love this. <laughs> Not sure he's, how he's going to cook a roast lamb on the uh, on the boat, but uh, anyway. Yeah, they, they went to a barbie in uh, Queenstown. I think he was going to Maddie Baker. Yeah, I think Maddie. I think it was a fish. Uh, it was a fishing trip, wasn't it? At oh, um, yeah. Port Port Ferry or wherever's over there. They had the barbie as well. So yeah, that would that would have made that would have made very good uh, fist of. Eating that magnificent meat tray as the ball comes out for Mornington towards the half back line. It's picked up by Miller. He got the hand pass over. Met Warwick Miller and Jackson Cole are both wearing the long sleeves out there this afternoon. It tells you what uh, the day's like. Uh, but the ball has come back because it was out of bounds. Boundary umpire in a perfect position there to uh, to see that. So Maddie Rain and uh, and Walsh going up there, no decisive winner. Mornington come out with it though, looking for the cheeky hand pass, ball down the line, only to find the opposition player in Richardson. Richardson looking for the switch, finding Speedy. Sorry, not Speedy. Racing, 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 quick to play on. Dangerous kick, putting his opponent in in danger there. But he still gathers at the end of the day. Broomhead with the ball now goes for a shot on goal. He goes bang. Broomhead with an early one. That's got to get him up and about, Michael. That was a very good goal because he was tucked right up in the pocket and uh, he didn't have a lot of open goal face, but he put that on the boot and it went nothing but centre over the top of the goal umpire's hat and through it goes. So good goal there by Tim Broomhead. That would just uh, settle his nerves because, geez, there'd be a lot of pressure on him at the moment. Um, Lockie Susovich manned up on Tim Broomhead there. And, uh, geez, Seaford be happy with his uh, to get Broomhead's hands on it early, and especially with a goal too. I'm guessing this afternoon that uh, uh, Danny Clements, a uh, Mornington supporter, li- living in Queensland. Now I'm tipping you'll be watching. You'd send us a message if you're watching, Pie Man. Hope you and uh, Pam and Ben, the family, are doing well. So uh, as the kick comes out towards the... Half back line, and the mark's been taken there by the president's son in Susovich. Went in short, poor kick, ball over the line, right out near the uh, right out near the wing area. Lockie Susovich, such a confident player, able to run off the man there and uh, gain get that one that, kick. Gain confidence from that Delidio matchup. Yeah, yeah, no question. And uh, we had him actually on the Topan Football Show after that game, and. Uh, uh, so, yeah, the following week, and uh, he said it was a it was a fantastic lesson, and uh, he had to play a different style playing on uh, playing on lids, and of course uh, because you need to respect those that have played at the highest level, and he most certainly did, and was able to take away a, a couple of little things and put them uh, under his bed uh, for safekeeping. Confidence yeah. player, good back. I don't I don't think his dad wants to know what what he's got under his bed, no, by the way. But no, uh, no dad does. There's a kick towards. It's a forward pocket for Seaford. Kick around the corner towards the top of the goal square. It's in the back. I would have thought. Oh, I wouldn't have thought. I would have thought that uh, the player in pain was uh, all over the Seaford player's back there, but not to be. So the umpire says, I'm going to parts of New South Wales plunged into two-week lockdown. So there's, there's some breaking news for you. Breaking? Wow. It was, it's been 24 hours. What's a, well, it, it, they hadn't officially announced a two-week lockdown, had they? Yeah. Oh, they had? Yeah. Okay, well, that's not breaking news. <laughs> I'm very late with the news. I'm sorry. <laughs> Sandra <laughs> Sully with the late news, Michael Voss. I oh, kicked <laughs> my to ball job, mate. towards half forward. Ball picked up here for Mornington there by the player in Brown, but he got tackled, and the umpire's going to call for a ball up, I think. Jackson Calder there just slipping away from his opponent in Zanecki. Zanecki just losing sight of the big Jackson call there. I'm not sure how you could. He looks like an albino. There's an opportunity for a quick kick there by Bird around the corner. Goes out towards the line and goes over for a boundary throw in. Bird, Bird, Bird is the word. Big Bird is the word. Joel Garner big was Big Bird. He was a wonderful fast bowler for the West Indies. Lockie Susovich and uh, Tim Broomhead just talking a little bit of a smack out in the middle of the ground. There's a hand pass over the top, an opportunity for Seaford to go forward through McLennan. Inside attacking, 50 goes the ball. Going up was Walton, couldn't take the mark. Ball on the ground. The umpire's given a free kick, oh. and it's a free kick against Mornington, and it will go to Aaron Walton. It will. Getting up very, very slowly from that contest is Kane. Distance won't be a problem here for Aaron Walton. It's just a question of accuracy. I think you've got a bit of a thing for... Big as a Walton too, don't you? Um, you don't mind him 
No, he's a very he's a he's a very good player. And when when he played for the Italy, I yes. believe he was playing at half back at the time. So he's turned himself into a foot. He's turned himself into a very effective forward. Um, well, if you can chase down your opponent in a speedy cane, there's a shot, and he pulls it to the left hand side. So through for a behind. So Seaford are up to two goals, four sixteen. Morning to the one straight six. We played thirteen minutes in the opening quarter, and we're live here at Miles Reserve in Seaford as the ball goes over the top. It's now Mornington with the opportunity to go forward towards Calder. He tried to get out the back there, but it was well done on that occasion by Doyle. Now Seaford with the opportunity. Oh, met now, heavily there again uh, by our boy Speedy. The umpire's going to come in and throw the ball up, though, Michael. He was happy with that uh, passage of play. So Rain and... North to go up in the ruck. North needs to get his hands on it early as there's a quick kick off the ground, not travelling any distance whatsoever. Ball still on true wing position in the hands of Mornington. Good tap from Seaford. Now, great gather there. Giddings. Quick kick in the forward 50, which is Mornington. Gathered now by Seaford. Good crumbing there, Vossi. Now, Seaford with great possession. They are. They they tend to, don't they? They're very effective off the halfback flank. No, he's as bald as a badger. Yeah, uh, By choice. I'm sure he's got some feathers. It is off target. He tried to get every inch of that leather covered uh, and it resulted in just being off target through for a minor. Mornington in possession of the ball, far side of the ground, back pocket for them. North flies, couldn't take a clean possession. Tim Broomhead with the ball now. Goes for a rubbery kick inside 50. Quick snap, looking for, doesn't find anyone in particular. Ball's at ground level, only to be gathered by Mornington. There's been a free kick for holding here, going Mornington's way. Short kick, finding Susovic. Back to Susovic. Quick to play on is that man again, Susovic. So, Mornington looking to go forward on this occasion. They go through the agency there on Bird, down towards centre wing, the ball's over the line the boundary throwing. There are some score updates. We'll get short, um, we'll get uh, Craig to give us some updates shortly on what's happening in London football. So, boundary up higher, throw the ball back in the play. That's all I'm going to have to do that. I'm just going to pull it away from the ears. So I can see what's going on. It's going to annoy me. As the kick goes towards half forward, and ball goes out of play once again for boundary throwing. Seaford at 2.5, 7.8, morning to a one straight six. We'll play 16 and a half minutes in the opening quarter. Seaford look to switch, and they will get away again through the agency there of Herbert, who goes out towards the centre wing. And that's, uh, well, that, I reckon you've probably had enough of that there, the Seaford player in Lachlan. Umpire said no. I'm going to pull it up. You would expect it's going to be a reasonably long quarter. Mossy, there's been a lot of uh, lot of stoppages here as Matty Rain takes the ball out of the ruck. Scrub a kick along the deck. Only travelling about 15 metres. Great tackle applied there. Umpire blows his whistle. He's going to come in and throw the ball up once again. Half forward flank. For Seaford. Rain and North going up. High. Free kick to Rain. Seaford. 17 minutes played in the Ray Wider Frankston scoreboard. 2 5 17 plays. Mornington 1 straight 6. Rain with the ball again. Quick hands. Kick inbound. Oh, fantastic. Intercept there, Mark, by, uh, by Sussovich. Quick to play on, looking for the switch, trying to find Speedy. Just goes over his head and the ball goes out of bounds. 
favour of Fremantle and 28 to 21 in favour of North Melbourne. Come on, Pies. Come on, Pies. Kane going into that contest extremely hard, Vossi. Good to see. He needs another couple of efforts after being uh, caught with the ball in Seaford's forward 50. Both teams, Vossi, playing very, uh, very like. Wow. Very much uh, like football, aren't they? Going in hard at the contest. You'd expect that from both football sides. Here's an opportunity for Seaford to go forward. They go through Ravenhall towards full forward. Oh. Sasevich touches that right on the line. And it's through from behind. 2 6 18 plays one straight six. Margin is 12 points. That's uh, that's just uh, earned him a hot dog at the end of the game. You would expect Vossi Sasevich saving that goal there, uh, which was a sure goal as the ball. Oh, that looked like a throw is far side of the ground. Kick inside attacking 50. Mornington looking to clear, but Walton a good tackle. Great tackle there. The umpire there. says, I'm going to hold the ball of, I'm going to hold the ball in there. I'm going to ball it up. Good second effort by Heath as well from Mornington, Vossi, just to uh, to follow up that drop mark. So right on the arc. Ball knocked down by big Macklin Rain, and the ball is going to be balled up once again. Right at Seaford's half forward line, left half forward flank. Right on the arc as... The umpire ready to throw the ball up once again. Rain and Walsh going up in that contest. No decisive winner. Ball's picked up by Seaford. Quick little hand pass to Tim Broomhead, and then he dishes it off and finds Aaron Walton Martin. again, Vossi. Getting his hands on it early. He's on a very, very tight angle here, almost uh, mounting that light post. So right from the boundary line, you kick from if you you can see the, the post there. He's about forty meters out. He has the shot across the face. It is across the face. I oh, know. I was going to say the umpire is going to let it go. No, the umpire said that is uh, actually look, look a like it went through. Point. No, I'm in a better position, so that's fine. <laughs> Mornington in with a long. You are or they are? No, no, they they, no, are. they were they're in a they're in a close position, so. Must have only just gone over, but the umpire was confident in that. Two seven nineteen Seaford plays Mornington one straight six. That's on the Ray White of Frankston scoreboard. We've played just over twenty two minutes. Well, I would expect we're not going to have a super long quarter here in the first quarter. This round's gone through some changes, hasn't it? Yeah, it's gone through some changes. I'm struggling to remember what it was like, if I'm honest. Oh, beautiful kick and a fantastic mark there taken by uh, by Ravenhall. Thank you, Michael. You're a lot quicker than me with the names. I still need to look at the sheet, and that's fine. 
So he'll kick from basically 50 metres. This is an opportunity to go down the line and uh, Just a couple of the fans just wanting to say good day, Michael, which is quite okay. I'm a man of the people. Yeah, that's a short, that's a shot of goal. That's a good kick by Raymond Hall. He's put it through for his first. And the third goal on the board is Seaford in 3725. Morning's got one straight six. That is on the Ray White of Frankston scoreboard. You're listening and watching RPFM, the voice of provincial football. Do you have TV antenna or reception issues? Need to wall mount your TV or want extra TV or data points? Then call TV Magic, Frankston and the Peninsula. Call Clint for a free quote on 0484 395 555. TV Magic, we make all your TV problems disappear. A station sponsor. Welcome back here to Seaford and Seaford with a 19 point lead. To be honest, they should be more in front. They're 10 shots to one. And the one shot the mornings have had was a steal by James Hammond. He, uh, when I say steal, he cut the pass off and ran into a very easy goal up. And that morning, to have struggled in his first quarter to get any sort of fluency in their play. It's a hand pass over the top. Morning to look to go forward through the house. Yeah. They will get the ball back here at half forward. Will they? No. They can lose, lose control now. A hand pass in. He was looking at the scully. Oh! The ground, but absolutely kick fresh air. Oh, good hard tackle there on the morning to player in Ash. That's uh, Necky just... on the deck there, just uh, applying that tackle very, very slow to get up. Uh, it's going to be time off here because he's being attended to, just making up, making his feet now. Vossi, of course, just where uh, where the umpire's about to throw it up. He's going to come off for a bit of a spell. He's a he's a massive unit. Is Macklin Rain? And, uh, to be honest, when we saw him play against Aaron Norton earlier in the year, uh, um, Aaron, uh, sorry, Matty Norton. Aaron Matty Norton, Norton, yep. Matty Norton's. Matty Norton's. Uh, Matty Norton's. Uh, uh, yeah, Matty Norton from the Big Red. Um, Big Red probably still dwarfed, uh, still dwarfed him, didn't he? Oh, Raven Hall going in for a hard bump there. Paid off. See if it's still with the ball in their forward 50. Now the ball comes out. Rayson has it. Rayson gives it off. Looking for and finding Tickle. Tickle with the ball. Ball's going further out. Looking for a re-entry. Only to find Mornington's strong defence. Scrubbery looking handball. Ball's still yet to come out as... The ball is wrapped up. Great defensive work there by Mornington. Desperation when desperation's needed. Umpire comes in, about to throw the ball up. Broomhead going up against a very competent-looking Walsh, standing about two foot higher than Broomhead. Backs himself every day of the week, though. Quick kick off the deck, goes nowhere. Looking for Broomhead. Ball on the far side of the ground, wing position. Still at ground level as the quarter time siren blows. The scoreboard reads 3 7 25 to Mornington, one straight six. We played 20, just over 26 minutes in that first quarter. Uh, it was a pretty good quarter to start off. What is uh, the first game at RF Miles Reserve? Uh, it is great scenes here, overcast but uh, and very, very chilly. Wouldn't know, though, because uh, we're behind glass. We're being well looked after. We might take a, a very quick break, and we'll be back with uh, the quarter-time wrap-up. You are listening and watching RPPFM, the voice of Peninsula Football. There's a quiet revolution happening on the rooftops of Australia. And at SolarHeart, we're proud to be leading the charge. One home, one family, one solar panel at a time. Helping smart Aussies make a real difference to the planet. Cutting their energy bills and connecting them to their smart energy future. Get smart. Get SolarHeart.
More and more people with a taste for quality are shopping at Eliza Meats. Kevin and his lean team pride themselves on the finest cuts. From juicy steaks and roasts to high-grade mince and sausages, and Eliza Meats are the gourmet specialists. Inquire about Eliza Meats Spit Hire for 9787-4473 for a mouth-watering meal fit for a king. It's all at Eliza Meats. See our sponsor Kevin at Eliza Meats, 112B Mount Eliza Way, a and sponsor. Do you have TV antenna or reception issues? Need to warm out your TV or want extra TV or data points? Then talk to TV Magic, Frankston and the Peninsula. TV Magic are your local TV and antenna specialists. We look after everything. TV, home theatre, satellite, plus all electrical work. Visit us at tvmagic.com.au or contact Clint for a free quote on 0484 395 555. TV Magic. We make all your TV problems disappear. A station sponsor. Brighton Auto is your Bayside and Peninsula automotive one-stop shop. This all-in-one award-winning Mitsubishi, MG and Sanyong dealership is also offering Holden certified parts and service. They have a huge range of new demo and used vehicles plus factory trained service technicians. Your proud RPPFM station sponsor Brighton Auto will also ensure your dream car is well within reach and kept in great hands. Why not visit brightonauto.com.au or find them at 67 Nepean Highway, Elsenwick, LMCT 10680. And welcome back to the match of the day between Seaford and Mornington. Thanks to TV Magic, of course, our marvellous sponsors today. Uh, match of the day sponsor for 2021 as uh, Seaford just breaking up from their huddle. Mornington's still in. Uh, Vossi, the crowd is still building here at RF Miles Reserve, the beautiful new RF Miles Reserve. Uh, we are going to be speaking to um, to Sue Miles, the granddaughter of the great RF Miles um, himself at halftime, as well as Phil, our great mate Phil, the uh, the vice president of Seaford Football Netball Club. They have, have plenty to celebrate today, mate, as uh, Mornington getting the rush up. Still in the huddle. Uh, I wonder what Goosey's saying. I don't think he would have been very happy with that quarter of football, Michael. No, he's uh, he's, uh, he's definitely going to say uh, Jackson Calder needs to get uh, get his hands on the ball a little bit more. Uh, North just starting to do a little bit more through the uh, through the uh, the centre of the ground. Uh, he's, it's a better morning tonight, I think, and I believe when uh, when that man has his hands on the ball, uh, crowd still just dispersing. There was uh, some some lengthy numbers. Uh, it's going to take some time for the crowd to disperse as the umpires set up play which is absolutely fantastic to see. Uh, Master officiators today already doing a great job in the first quarter. Uh, just some quick, while we're still waiting for some of that crowd, quick goal kickers, uh, one to Fisher from Seaford, Broomhead with one, Ravenhall with one, and just one single goal kicker to, uh, to Cameron from Mornington. Start of the second quarter in the match of the day here live from Seaford in Mornington looking to go forward. 
and they get the ball t- towards Spooty, who knocked it back towards Dinger, who gets the ball, and uh, the ball kicked forward there for Mornington inside their attacking 50. Cameron there trying to apply some forward pressure. Good tackle applied. Mornington looking to score early. Speedy around the corner goes the kick, and that is a goal, and that took all of 28 seconds in the second quarter, and Mornington are away. That's the start that Mornington would have wanted, and maybe why Goosey just had these boys in the huddle for a little bit longer, Michael. Yeah, well, I think they, they might have got a bit of a rock at a quarter time. But in saying that, um, they just need now to keep the pressure on, because let's be honest, see for the quarter time, 10 shots to one should have had, should have been more in front. Missed a few gettable shots, and uh, there was there was a few t- there was probably more tough ones, more out towards the pockets. But I reckon uh, they had the opportunity to score in in those. Um, so the umpire calling for ball up in the centre of the ground. Seaford up by thirteen points in the match today. Short pass. Yes, absolutely, Michael. So, uh, 13 points here at the New Look RF Miles Reserve. It's a magnificent uh, side here. People just enjoying themselves. Crowds back at the football, all that sort of stuff. We love this. As the ball goes towards the wing, but it's been marked there by Braun for Seaford. It goes with an underground sort of a kick. He's under pressure. Now the Mornington side will get it back through Miller. who goes in towards the centre of the ground. He just put it into open spaces and said, go and get it, boys. Speedy was one of the ones he was looking for. It's picked up and a shot at Dolan. I reckon he's done a hamstring there, the Mornington player. Yeah, it looks like he's been shot, Mossy. And that Mornington player is the coach's son in Will Goosey, and he is going straight to the bench, and I reckon he's done... done a, well, he's done he's done something, because he, now he's just sitting on the ground. So I'm not sure what's going on there, but he's singled to the bench to say, I'm gone. I think the goose is cooked. I think his goose is cooked. Yeah, a bit like a bit like Turkey were cooked in the uh, Euros this week as well. So, yeah. Anyhow, that, 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 went, that went over like a lead balloon, that one. So, <laughs> Mark taken on centre wing there for Mornington. It's been taken there by Harrington. He plays on. He goes towards the centre half back area, but it's going to be picked up there for the Mornington side. They will get out of trouble, I think, just. That's a tackle too high, surely. The umpire says yes. Does so. All right. Okay. You can hear me all right now. That's beautiful. C for 3725, Mornington 2113. Live here at the RF Miles Reserve. Long kick to full forward. Mark has been taken there for Mornington and they will clear. We'll get some updates from you, Craig, shortly with what's happening in Division 1 and Division 2. So, Seaford with the opportunity through Braun. And, 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 and. All right, so long kick towards the centre of the ground. Is marked there for Seaford. It's been marked there by one of those players that we don't have a number for, number 23. That's all right. Oh, we do have, that's, her, that's uh, Herbert of the... Herbert. Yep. So short pass marked. All right, okay. Long kick inside attacking 50. Ball on the ground, picked up, and a quick snap at goal is going to be hooked too oh. far there on that occasion there by Scully, through for a behind. Scully backed himself in, which I don't mind. A small forwards, uh, sort of on baller, getting the uh, 
getting the scrum then and then having the opportunity to take that snap is uh, is impressive from that young man. Well done. Mortensen quick to take the ball out. Does so. This side of the ground, pavilion side. Great mark there taken. Warwick Miller. By Miller. Miller quick to play on. Short kick. Ball dropped there by North. Uncharacteristic. Looking for Jackson Calder. Flies. Doesn't get his hands on it. Just falls short into Macklin Rain. Quick to give it off. Broomhead. Long, booming hand pass. Looking for the switch here, as you'd expect. Seaford with some open ground. Vossi. There's certainly a bit of a difference in the uh, the the width of I was going to say the wideness, but that's not a, that's not a word. Uh, the width of this ground, um, in terms of uh, the size of the, the size of the ground, and it's more more space for players to run in. So an opportunity. A dinger gets a hand pass to Mornington. Now quick kick in towards the centre of the ground towards centre half back. In fact, the mark has been taken by Bold. They can play on here, Mornington. A go towards centre wing. Oh, oh overrunning the ball. That is at an absolute uh, no no. Long kick to oh. pull forward. Jackson Calder takes the mark. Oh, was there hands in the back then, Vossi? I don't know. Might about have been that marginal, one. but he had he had the position there. He, he probably did. didn't even have to he probably didn't even have to use his hands, but he did just. So he might have got away with one with the, the big Jacko. Yeah, I, I reckon he did, Vossi. But anyway, that uh, will continue on. He's directly in front. He's going to kick this from about 15, 15 out. Yep, directly in front. This would be Mornington's third goal, and they'll be even on goals. Just behind on the behinds tally then. Shot at goal is his first kick, and his first goal, Jackson Calder, for the second quarter. So Mornington up to 3-1-19. See for the three nine twenty seven. Craig, have you got some score updates for us at all? Thanks uh, to yes, Solar Heart. Yes, I have. Uh, quickly in uh, Div two, uh, no score between Devon Meadows and Rye just yet. Nothing through from Pearsdale or Crip Point. It's a one point game. Hastings one point leaders over Tyab. Uh, Karingal twenty five point leaders over Chelsea, and uh, Somerville are eleven point leaders over Lang Warren into the second quarter. And in uh, Division one, uh, Frankston YCW. 13 points up over Mount Eliza. Uh, Bond Beach, uh, 41 points up over Red Hill. Uh, Rosebud, three points up on Dramana, oh. 20 to 17. And Sorrento are 13 points up on the Pines. Thanks for that, uh, Craigo. And thanks to uh, to Solar Heart for Around the Grounds. Beautiful passage of play there just uh, off camera was, uh, was uh, Broomhead just uh, giving the ball off. Beautiful kick. As uh, Mornington in possession of the football at the moment, just in the half forward flank for them. Ball goes out of bounds. Umpire to throw it back in. Fantastic kick and mark there taken uh, by Seaford player Loney. Of course, little Loney probably should have just stopped and propped and gone inbound, but was quick, too quick to play on as that man there with the ball at the moment. Loney just. Gives a quick handball off to go in Mornington's hands. Long lot of Loney's have played local football, Absolutely. obviously. And Ken was a Ken who, who passed away oh, quite a few years ago now, but he was a very good cricketer too. Ryan and Nathan, of course, both played AFL. Jackson, yes, Jackson in the AFL. So the Loney name just continues on around the Mornington Peninsula. Who knows? He might end up. He might end up where. Uh, where uh, quite a the other few of the Loneys have, you never know. Macklin Rain there, Vossi, just not uh, happy with the with the treatment he was just given, but umpire wouldn't have a bar of it as the ball's thrown up. North and Rain go up in that one. There's been a free kick plucked and going to Macklin Rain, so maybe just uh, a return favour by the umpire there. Macklin Rain with us. That's why full. That's why rucks do not kick the ball, Vossi, as he just creams that ball off the boot and goes out of bounds on the full. That was rubbish. Yeah, that could be another volatile subject. <laughs> trying to kick balls, I tell you. Here's an opportunity for Mornington Bird got tackled. You don't. He get... might have been. T he might have got dot low in the tackle. Yeah. The umpire said, "No, nah, I'm not going to give a free kick there." And there's a ball up right in front of the Mornington goal, 25 to 30 metres out. Mornington into attack. They've kicked the oh, kicked the only two goals so far in this second quarter. Oh, Mornington going about it really well at the moment in their forward 50. They forward pressure. A goal. This is absolutely a complete contrast. Speedy around the Bang! corner. He's kicked his second goal. And you don't give a player like Adrian Speedy room to, to have a, a snap at goal like that because he will kill you every time. How impressive is Aaron Speedy? 
Adrian. Adrian. Him too. <laughs> I knew it started with A. Yeah, yeah that's all right. Four one twenty five phase three nine twenty seven. So see if it's still up by two points, but. But Adrian Speedy, two goals this quarter, and he's looking very, very good at the moment. And uh, putting Seaford, his hand up for that wonderful Eliza Meets Meat Tray. Seaford just need to change the momentum in the game here. They need to get back on top. I know it's the margin's only two points, but Mornington having all the play at the moment. Oh, that is definitely holding the man there. Great decision, umpire, going to Mornington. Oh, the first ever sponsor of Arnable Pay. Oh, were they? The, <laughs> oh, just a man of the facts. S double oh one on the uh, on the trap sheet at uh, the radio station. That's it. That's their number, and always will be their number. They're fantastic sponsors, as all our sponsors are. Jackson Calder just getting caught up there in a non call. He wanted that free. Get on with it, Jackson Calder. Bloody hell! Yeah, no, he just uh, just focus on what you got to do, and that's get the agate. Exactly. Macklin Rain running in with his hand up, saying, oh, "I'm going up," and he will be going up against North. Or he North might have grabbed North's Howard. jumper he too. Most certainly grab his jumper there, Vossi. Seaford pressing here. He's still in possession of the football wing position. Scrubbery looking kick. Panned out though. Just landing down the throat of Fisher. Fisher already with one. He's going to be going against the breeze here. So I can't see distance being in his favour. He's looking for an option. There's a couple of options in forward. 30 metre. Oh, just too easy. Way too easy there. Push uh, the morning to yeah. push the morning to defence away. Way too easily then. You can pick up that player who marked that ball. I'm sure, Vossi. Looks like uh, is that Ravenhall with the oh, ball? It is. Yeah, it is Ravenhall. Just too easy for Ravenhall there. Just ditches his opponent. Uh, was able was able sorry to take an easy mark inside uh, the forward fifty. He's going to kick this directly in front from about twenty out. Shouldn't be an issue here for uh, Ravenhall with already one today as he sets sail and uh, umpire works a little. Oh, it's just gone to the right. So uh, minor. That is criminal. That uh, really is. Yeah, look, it's disappointing. <laughs> I didn't want to state the obvious, but I knew you would. So yeah. Ravenhall there with a missed opportunity. Scoreboard reads 3-10-28 to Mornington 4-1-25. We've played 12 and a half minutes in this second quarter. Mornington looking to bring the ball down the broadcast side. A long kick out towards centre wing. Oh, great Jackson, Jackson Calder Calder. going up there second in line, but he took the mark. Read the ball a bit better. He goes beautiful towards Cameron. Beautiful kick. Beautiful mark there and uh, beautiful kick towards uh, James Cameron. He takes the mark. And Mornington with a shot coming up here through Bird. Bird is the word. He's been good today. He's looking around for options, though, Vossi. He doesn't back himself from here. It's He's hard up against the fence. He's going to kick this ball from about, well, he's going to kick it from about 52 metres, as the arc states. He's getting very close, wields around, plays on. It's a rubbery-looking kick straight that, down oh. the throat of a defender of Seaford. Gee, I would, I would have actually got closer oh, than what that, that was. That was just shocking. That should came right just, off the side. Have gone. Oh, that's terrible as well. Finding that man in bird again. What's he going to do this time, Bossy? The boys to... are laughing in the background <laughs> at my comment. Just said that I would have got that closer. They're absolutely... What shoes are you... Oh, you're wearing your ASICs today, so you might have gotten closer in your ASICs. If you're wearing your bloody... Jand... $180 you're wearing... shoes. If you're wearing your jandals, you would have got nowhere near it. Bird's going to kick this ball from, a, uh, from about 40 metres. As he sets sail, and it looks good. It looks good, and it's a goal. That's what Mornington wanted, absolutely. You're listening and watching Audible PFM, the voice of Peninsula Football. Then call TV. And welcome back. Magic, Frankston and the Peninsula. Call Clint for a free quote on 0484 395 555. TV Magic, we make all your TV problems disappear. A station sponsor. Back here to the RF Miles Reserve in Seaford. First time I've said that. Uh, been a long time coming, but they're back at the 1,800 days. Season. Did you know that? 1,800? Yeah, about that. <laughs> I'm telling you, I'm very close to the mark. Mornington hit the scoreboard in front for the first time today. 3-10-20, plays Mornington 5-1-31. Fantastic second quarter for them. If they can sneak a couple of sneaky goals here, 
Rapport. There's been a free kick so coming don't, back don't to... Don't give that for too far. Oh, wow. Executive producer Nipple Sasevich says yes. I as wouldn't have thought that's us. He's no. just he's just watching the replay. I don't think there was quite uh, I wouldn't as have much thought. distance there. Oh, so. I wouldn't have thought. Raven Hall is going to kick this from too far out, looking for an inside option and finding one. Has a mark been paid? It has been paid. Beautiful mark. Going to big as a Walton, it looks like. It's a long way out. I can't quite see, even with me spectacles on. Just uh, up. Pardon? Fremantle up by 19 points at half time, and the Suns up by eight points. Go the Suns. Who would you really pick in that day? North Melbourne or Gold Coast? God. Out of bounds on the full. That looked like that was going to happen every day of the week. He was hard up against the boundary there. He's going to kick it from about 30 out. All the record, I picked the Suns. Of course you did. I don't know. I don't really know why. Well, but... you've got uh, you've got no one to uh, to say otherwise. So I tipped them What's as well. What's this about a massage table? Oh, I tipped them as well, Vossi, just so you know. Long kick. Back in, out of their defensive zone was Mornington. They have the ball at the moment. Far side of the ground, wing position. Ball goes out of bounds. Umpire to come in and throw the ball back up. In, or whatever he likes to do with it. Listen to the sea of people through the... I know. I was going to comment on that earlier, but uh, I'd just like to make a, a quick mention that everyone is practising social distancing. Uh, but that room next to us, which is the main part of the pavilion, there is probably about... 150 people in there, if not more. And why wouldn't you be? Because we are here for the first time in 2021. And for what has been four years, has been a beautiful mark taken inside 50 by that man there in Jackson Calder. He uh, likes his chances from here, and so do I. He's going to kick it from about 48. The issues that Mornington had in the first quarter with not manning up and then... Totally different Mornington side. It's totally different. Totally Seifert, different. Seifert are the ones that are being lazy in this quarter. Mornington getting the ball much fluent, much more fluent into their forward line. So I'm Jackson saying... told for goal number two. Has the shot and he pulls it to the left-hand side. So three from behind. So Mornington up to 5 two, thirty-two. Seifert are three goals, 10-28. We played 18 minutes in the second quarter. We're live here thanks to TV Magic. TV Magic. Once Great magic sponsors. done with your TV, go to TV Magic. They will look after you. A long kick to come out of defence. Clint is exceptional at his Going up trade. and knocking the... Could have marked that one, actually. There's an opportunity now for Mornington through the agency there. Oh, Ash, good goes vision. Inside. Good Mark vision. Taken there by Warwick Miller. We were talking about it this morning on the Toe Punt Football Show, Vossi, the need for Mornington to lower their eyes. That was what just took place. Very, very good football by Mornington. But the same problem for 20 years, Mornington. They, do, they don't always do it. When they do it, oh, they're that's much a better beautiful side because kick. of it. Warwick beautiful Miller has put kick. through a goal on the board. And Mornington up to 10 points in front. 6 2 38. Seaford 3 10 28. We've played 18 and a half minutes on the Ray White of Frankston scoreboard. You're listening and watching RPPFM, the voice of Peninsula Football. TV or want extra TV or Do data points, then call TV not? Magic, Frankston and the Peninsula. <laughs> call Clint for a free quote on 0484 395 555. TV Magic, we make all your TV problems disappear. A station sponsor. And welcome back to RF Miles Reserve. Mornington in the trail again, looking for Miller. Couldn't find him, goes over his head. Called a quick to follow it up, but the ball beats them over the boundary line. Ball is in Mornington's forward 50 again. They are pressing, pressing, pressing here. Seaford need to respond, and they need to respond now. 3 10 28 plays Mornington 6 2 38. And that's on the Ray Wire to Frankson scoreboard, as Michael says. And Seaford do so in the agency of that man there, Big Macklem Rain. There's been a free kick picked out going Mornington's way, and the ball's going to go to. Heath from Mornington. He's looking for options. Courtesy of Solar Heart, Frankston YCW Stone Tats. <laughs> Two Six, words. Seven forty-three plays three four twenty-two. That's a good-looking kick. Makes the distance not a problem, but just pushes it to the left through for a minor. Mornington six three thirty-nine plays Seaford three ten twenty-eight. 
We played just gone 20 minutes of this game. It's going to be a long quarter, this one. There's been plenty of goals kicked. I like it. Oh, I don't know. It's, no. It's been... I don't know, something's festering inside his guts that's seeping out his cake hole. No, short pass, no. No, but I'm smelling. I haven't eaten yet today. Maybe it's me. Maybe it's my insides eating themselves because whoo, I'm hungry. If you are listening and you feel like coming up to our commentary position to give me a couple of hot dogs, I won't say no. I've got a couple of bucks in my pocket. Gladly pay as Seaford in possession of the football at the moment. It's a scrubby looking handball over, but does so anyway, finding that man there in young Scully. Scully with a quick handball wrapped up is Mornington. The umpire's going to come in and throw the ball up as you just scare the absolute bejesus out of me. I won't do it to the big man, but uh, thank you very much. My call has been heard. Thank you to a very, very responsive supporter of RPPFM. I got myself a roll, listeners. So you chew into, you chew into that. Oh, I'm going to fold this bad boy in half and swallow it like an emu getting down an apple. I'll give you the red hot tip. I am. Do, we, do emus eat a, a, apples? Do they? Yeah. Have you not seen an emu get down an apple? It's the funniest thing you've ever seen in your life. I YouTube it. it. It's very funny. Very very funny. It was like you getting down your bloody hungry jacks breakfast this morning. You nearly choked. I nearly give, had to give you the old Heimlich remover, and that would have been a sight for sore eyes. <laughs> Yeah, no, I had, to, I had to get it down. I, was, I, I got in for the start of the show. But, but they had about five seconds to go and you still had food all over your face. <laughs> if, you, uh, if you aren't a fan of the Toe Punt Football Show, if you've never called us before from nine o'clock on a Saturday morning, uh, make sure you do so because it is absolutely jam-packed with entertainment. It is. Johnny Beswick. Where is our good boy, John Boy, Big John? Johnny's at Somerville. Somerville, of course. The other match of the day as Seaford set fly from about 50 out. And the ball is too quick and goes out of bounds. Umpire to throw it back in. So John Boy will be bringing us some halftime live action from uh, from Somerville Recreational Reserve. I think it is, isn't it? It's not at Langy. It's at Summy. Yeah, so it is at Summy. Yeah, it is at Summy. Mornington looking to bring the ball out of out of trouble. It's uh, 22 and a half minutes into the, into the second quarter. Kick down towards Miller, who has kicked a goal in this quarter. Mornington looking so much better in this second yeah, quarter. No, uh, there's no question. That's uh, a tackle applied on on Ash. So the Seaford side will get the ball and bring it back forward oh, through the agency. There, Lachlan goes straight across the face oh, of goal. Gonna hurt. That's going to hurt, Michael. Crank was the player who got the ball over towards his teammate there, and they can go forward here. Mornington, a high kick towards full forward. It's going to be off target. Oh, and that was more of a kick and hope rather than anything else. Oh. Jackson Calder was nowhere near that contest. But he stopped and propped. That ball could have done anything. When the ball hits the ground, it's not round. It's not just going to go straight yeah, up in the air. It's true. going to go from every bloody angle. Jackson yeah. Calder just being a little bit a little bit sloppy around those kinds of instances where uh, the ball comes to ground. And uh, he needs to follow that footy up. He's the full forward. Do your job. You are on notice in my eyes right now. Oh, you volatile, are a, volatile short pass. Well, look, he's he's the man that everyone looks for. And if you do, quite frankly, Vossi, pathetic stuff like that, you're going to get called out. A little bit happening off the ball. I like that. A lot, uh, lot of emotion in today's game. Short kick. Finding his teammate there in our great mate, Speedy. Speedy. A recipient of the Eliza Meets meat tray for the best on ground. Winning that at... Uh, at Devon Meadows, the game they sh shouldn't have won. Is that too soon or am I right? No, I'm right. There's a kick towards full forward. Mornington will go back and try and clear the ball. With, uh, there is... Uh, Mornington well, back getting the job done at the moment, Michael. Fisher went to ground. Mark taken by Smart. And right I'm... on the boundary line, Jake Smart. He goes up towards oh. half forward. And copying a good solid hit there. Nothing illegal, just a good body hit. There was Brown. The ball goes over for a boundary throw in. A little bit of a howdy do. I don't mind that. As I mentioned a couple of minutes ago, a lot of emotion in this in this game. Big Macklin Rain coming in with a hard hit, only to be met with the ball going out of bounds. Commentator, sorry, not commentators. Some of the crowd just uh, just commenting on one of the players' looks, calling him ugly. I don't mind that either. North, North sets sail from forward. about fifty out and goes bang. 
They might get, <laughs> they might get another kick here, Mornington. They might just get another kick. I'm no. to, Mornington player was slung to ground. And, yep, Hold he's it. given another free oh, kick. So, Mornington with the opportunity boy, to get oh, two boy, goals. we. Brown's a recipient. He was tackled to the ground after as as the ball was going through. Basically, the ball had just gone oh, through for a goal. No. And I don't believe I've seen this in a very, very long time. It doesn't happen often. When it happens, it's a killer. 7 4 46. It could be 8 4 52 after this kick. We are 26 minutes in the second quarter, and Seaford have stopped to a walk in this second quarter. Oh, instead he goes in short. Oh, oh, just found no. It. Just found a uh, very soft part of the ground there. The morning to player in Speedy fell to ground. Oh, that's dropping the ball every day of the week. Absolutely. Well, well done, umpire. Now that might be fifty. Herbert is just getting in the face of the Mornington players, and he's just just losing a little bit of focus. It's a fifty. It's going to be fifty meters. It is, is it? fifty meters. Absolutely. It so is. this will be a certain goal. So Mornington, all of a sudden, will be up by twenty-four points. That kick going again to Brown, Bossy. So Brown just dishing it off there, and uh, not a great disposal from him. But he's going to get an opportunity now to kick the ball uh, pretty much in the goal square. So, well, that was a, a pretty poor five minutes from Seaford. Undisciplined football uh, by them. Two goals in three minutes going to Mornington. Easy kick here. Just waltzes in and goes whack. No problem at all. Mornington and that man there in brown kicking the goal there. Oh, Struth. That is an interesting 10 minutes, Vossi. Who kicked that first one, please? North. From north north was it was one. north. Thank you a very, a very much. And then Brown with that one there. Goal kickers thus far, we have Speedy with two singles to Jackson Calder, North, Cameron, Brown and Miller. And Bird. And Bird, have I missed one? Thank you very much. Michael. Hate to state the obvious, but wow, we Seaford need one here. They were, what were they in front? They were 19 points in front, I think, at quarter time. Oh, they're on. And now 24 points behind. I guess through it. They go inside attacking 50 to Seaford. They might be up an opportunity to get a late goal here. Ravenhall's trying to get the ball. Mornington players tackling, from, put the meat in the sandwich there. Was Ravenhall and the umpire says, I'm going to ball it up. Meat in the sandwich sounds like you at uh, Beaches on a Saturday night. Oh. It's getting, getting a bit you, of action on the dance you floor. Do, you do what you got to do. You short do, pass. He's cutting them from the herd. kick off the ground. Not travelling very far. Ball is wrapped up. Umpire to blow his whistle. You should, you should take Ash there. I wouldn't subject her to uh... <laughs> <laughs> Maybe if you went, then I'd trust. Or would I? No, I would. Of course I would. Long kick inside attacking 50. Scully's the man looking oh. to rave the pack. Oh, Mornington, Mornington defence just getting it done again. Very strong. Very strong defence led by uh, that man down there in Loki Sasevich. I hope he gets extra gravy with his taters tonight, Peter. Quick. Oh, great smother there. Quick kick out of that uh, out of that stoppage there by Broomhead. So how much money are we on to, to give Lockie the best on ground today, uh, Sas? None. That's what I would have thought he'd say. Surely. Well, yeah, haven't you got a vested interest in uh, the meat tray? Because it's only going to come to your place. I would have thought you'd be all over that. <laughs> Quick kick out of the stoppage. Fish up. Fish up. Through oh, for a minor. It's an... uh -huh. Seven goals to zero in the second quarter. And turned a 17-point deficit into a 23-point lead as... Mornington looking to come in from full back. And what's happened here? There's a player, there's actually a player down. There is a player down. I actually didn't see that. Still on the ground. Stretch is coming out. Both teams getting inside their inside huddles here. 
we might uh, we might try and get some footage of what happened. Uh, looks like Ravenhall down there. It is. It's actually Ravenhall who's gone to ground. Uh, he is very, very ginger uh, in a lot of pain. Uh, um, I know if you're, uh, I'm going to try and describe this for our radio listeners, but uh, he seems to be holding his right knee. Uh, we've got some fantastic vision of, uh, of that coming through if you're around a device. He's in a lot of pain. I'm going to suggest that he's dislocated his knee. If you're in that amount of pain, you've dislocated your knee as far as I'm concerned. Both teams just inside huddles at the moment. Macklin Rain going over to uh, to have a chat to Ravenhole, so I can't help but to think maybe uh, Big Macklin might have had a hand in that, uh, maybe falling on him. I'm not going to speculate. Is it I just, is it, yeah, it is Ravenhall. He looks like he's dislocated his knee, bossy. Um, we might take an opportunity to have a quick break while uh, while Ravenhall's being stretched off. You're listening and watching RWPFM, the voice of Peninsula football. your TV or want extra TV or data points, then call TV Magic, Frankston and the Peninsula. Call Clint for a free quote on 0484 395 555. TV Magic, we make all your TV problems disappear. A station sponsor. More and more people with a taste for quality are shopping at Eliza Meats. Kevin and his lean team pride themselves on the finest cuts. See our sponsor Kevin at Eliza Meats, 112B Mount Eliza Way, a station sponsor. And welcome back to RF Miles Reserve as Ravenhall. Um, we are getting some vision here, uh, but uh, for our, as I said, for our radio listeners, he's got his hands on his on his head. He's in a lot of pain. They're just uh, supporting that knee. Uh, the trainer's supporting that knee. So I would suggest, looking at his kneecap there, that that is a clear dislocation of the knee. And with the amount of pain he's in, uh, that is definitely a dislocation. I would suggest, Lossy. You know, you know the thing about that, that is. Can I just before you go, this is going to hurt the Seaford Football Netball Club. He's been on fire, um, Ravenhall, and he's the man to look to uh, in the uh, in the forward fifty four Seaford. So that's going to hurt. You know the thing about about the being carried off. Then both teams both teams out there giving a hand to get the job done. Yep, like absolutely. they're pitching in to help. Absolutely, it's it's. It's local, amazing. Local footy, Vossi, no one likes to see. And and in competition sport, no one likes to see when players are injured. Um, so it's it's a it's a lovely gesture. The for, care the care of the player exactly. the care of the player well, is. Well mate, he's is, gonna is miss out thing. on work now. Well, this yeah. isn't this isn't his job. He's gonna rock up to work on a Monday. Well, he's not gonna be doing it because he's gonna have a, a massive bloody knee brace Depending on. Depending on what he does for a crust, too. Well, exactly right. He could have just taken his trade away. So, it, uh, just to reflect, uh, Ravenhall has been stretched off as the halftime siren goes. Uh, but uh, Ravenhall, huge loss to Seaford Football Netball Club as Ravenhall has uh, has been stretched off the ground not to return with a what looks like a dislocated knee. Uh, Mornington. Well, we what a fantastic second quarter by them. Eight four fifty two plays Seaford three eleven twenty nine. We played thirty three and a half minutes in that quarter, as you'd expect, especially with the time off, uh, with Ravenhall being taken off. Um, we might, uh, we might. Well, we'll take a quick break and we'll be back with, with more of the match. John Beswick at Seaford with, uh, uh, so at Somerville, I should say. He will be back with him shortly. Absolutely, and uh, and with the halftime wrap here at RF Miles Reserve. You are listening and watching R P F M. The voice of Peninsula Football. Once again, and this was to be the longest goal for years. From Kilda's Jeff Ferring. There's a booming torpedo kick from Ferring to full forward. Oh! What the goal! I tell you that Mornington are a point in front late in the last quarter. We'll get to Craig O. Oh, after the game with those scores. It's a long big spiralling <laughs> kick from 70. It's a goal from 70 metres coming. Slams it on the boot. Something Bat from Bat nothing. Bat was it Batsanis? It was too. Coming just celebrating there. I'll <laughs> test your memory. What, did, what does his name mean to you? Jeff Berry. Nothing. He was the man who kicked the goal for St Kilda against Collingwood, I think it was.
There's a quiet revolution happening on the rooftops of Australia. And at Solar Heart, we're proud to be leading the charge. One home, one family, one solar panel at a time. Helping smart Aussies make a real difference to the planet. Cutting their energy bills and connecting them to their smart energy future. Get smart. Get solar heart. More and more people with a taste for quality are shopping at Eliza Meats. Kevin and his lean team pride themselves on the finest cuts. From juicy steaks and roasts to high-grade mince and sausages, and Eliza Meats are the gourmet specialists. Inquire about Eliza Meats Spit Hire for 9787 4473 for a mouth-watering meal fit for a king. It's all at Eliza Meats. See our sponsor Kevin at Eliza Meats, 112B Mount Eliza Way, a station sponsor. Do you have TV antenna or reception issues? Need to warm out your TV or want extra TV or data points? Then talk to TV Magic, Frankston and the Peninsula. TV Magic are your local TV and antenna specialists. We look after everything. TV, home theatre, satellite, plus all electrical work. Visit us at tvmagic.com.au or contact Clint for a free quote on 0484 395 555. TV Magic, we make all your TV problems disappear. A station sponsor. Brighton Auto is your Bayside and Peninsula automotive one-stop shop. This all-in-one award-winning Mitsubishi, MG and Sanyong dealership is also offering Holden certified parts and service. They have a huge range of new demo and used vehicles plus factory trained service technicians. Your proud RPPFM station sponsor Brighton Auto will also ensure your dream car is well within reach and kept in great hands. Why not visit brightonauto.com.au or find them at 67 Nepean Highway, Elsonwick, LMCT 10680. Do you have TV antenna or reception issues? Need to wall mount your TV or want extra TV or data points? Then call TV Magic, Frankston and the Peninsula. Call Clint for a free quote on 0484 395 555. TV Magic, we make all your TV problems disappear. A station sponsor. More and more people with a taste for quality are shopping at Eliza Meats. Kevin and his lean team pride themselves on the finest cuts. See our sponsor Kevin at Eliza Meats, 112B Mount Eliza Way, a station sponsor. And welcome back to RF Miles Reserve here at Seaford. Uh, we're... Uh, Mornington just getting the job done uh, thus far, having a fantastic second quarter. Uh, scoreboard reads 8 4 52, Seaford 3 11 29. We're just through the halftime break, and I've managed to have a salad roll. So I might be asleep in a couple of minutes, but I'm sure Vossi will just uh, give me a poke with a stick as um, he's just disappeared for a little while. Uh, we will be crossing to John very, very shortly from. Uh, from Somerville Recreational Reserve, where Somerville are taking on Lang Warren. Uh, how are we going, boys? Have we got John Boy there? We're just going to get him on now, on here now, hopefully. Are you there, John? Yeah, it's all right. We're having uh, just a little uh, phone issues. I might just quickly do the score. Check yeah, for yeah you. sounds good. Nice right, short go. pass. Yeah, you, uh, Division one uh, at the moment, uh, Frankston Bombers, 6945, EDS, 3119. Frankston YCW, 
6743, Mount Eliza 3422, Bond Beach 8755, uh, Red Hill 128, and uh, Dramana and Rosebud, uh, Rosebud uh, 3220, Dramana 2517, and uh, Sorrento 5535. Uh, Pines 4428 at half time. Uh, Div 2, the scores we have through at the moment. Um, obviously, uh, Mornington leading here. Uh, Devon Meadows 6541 over Rye 4832. Uh, no score through from the Pearsdale uh, Crip Point game. Hastings 4529, Tyab 3523, uh, Keringle 7345, uh, Chelsea 6440, uh, and Somerville. And Lang Warren, the, the big match of the day in Div 2, Somerville 7 6 48, um, and uh, Lang Warren 6 4 40. Uh, we're going to see if we can get uh, John through on another phone, um, and uh, we might be able to get him through on uh, this one very, very shortly. So that's the scores, Adam. Thanks, Craig O. Well, uh, the scenes at uh, halftime here at RF Miles Reserve is uh, one of, well, let's put it this way, just jubilation here. Uh, there's there's kids kicking the football oh, and there's... Uh, pure happiness short Yeah, pass. look, there is. It is few, uh, uh, full of happiness here, Vossi, isn't it? And um, I do... Uh, I did make... Oh, I, I wanted to make mention and uh, just for... Well, look, it's fun facts with Adam at, uh, at 3.25. But have you noticed you haven't seen a train go by yet? So yeah, maybe just 100%. stopping trains today for the great game. And uh, I'll give you a, I'll give you a fun fact. I've just discovered that the, the oh, granddaughter. I knew you were going to get it out. The the grand the granddaughter the granddaughter's down there. Sue Miles. Sue Miles. She's my ex science teacher from high school. I believe we have uh, John Boy down. That is down a small at, world. Uh, it is a small world, but we have. It's not all about you, Michael. We have uh, John Boy down at uh, Somerville, I believe. Yeah, mate. Um, boys, I'm down at Somerville. They just started the third quarter, so they actually started the game five minutes to two, Sue. That was interesting. But um, Somerville, <laughs> seven goals, 749. This is Lange, six goals, 541. Oh, maybe they heard the uh, the Tofun football show this morning, uh, John Boy, where uh, we all tip, uh, all tip Lange. Just um, so that the... Uh, the I suppose the game, how it's unfolded thus far, uh, we saw, mate, uh, you were there, Rye, Rye taking on Lang Warren at Lang Warren. They tended to play the, the same game style that Lang Warren were playing but couldn't sustain it for four quarters. Is that what you're seeing down at uh, Somerville? Uh, it's, <laughs> I reckon it's, it's probably what I thought would be the game in match of day besides LTC for coming back home. Um, Somerville would want to test themselves like everyone else against the top of the table in Div 2 and Lang Warren, and so far they're fulfilling it. Yeah, look, I, I don't reckon, John, I don't reckon a loss to Lang Warren will do them any harm, to be perfectly honest, because the I think there'll be people out there that say they've got to lose one at some stage. You certainly don't want to go 18, 18 wins and then lose two in, a, two in a row in the final. So, I don't it, it, mind you, they're still well and truly in the game. So, that score again, John, just we're just they're not long off starting here as well. Uh, 7 8, Somerville 50, Sir 6 5, 41, Lang Warren. Lang Warren's kicking in the third quarter to the net ball end. All right. Thank you, John. All right. Uh, of course, John Boy there joining us from uh, Somerville Recreational Reserve where uh, Somerville just getting the job done. Uh, as you heard, three-quarter time has just started. Somerville are up and uh, interesting times. Almost the match of the day uh, if uh, if we weren't here for the Somerville, uh, sorry, for the uh, Seaford and Mornington game. And, uh, well, a man that's been working tirelessly behind the scenes for a, a very long time now and uh, almost a bit of a relieved uh, look on the face, although... Mate, I know you'd still be uh, extremely busy down there. You're a little bit thin on the field, apparently, you said. That, uh, but, Phil, Vice President of uh, Seaford Football Netball Club, mate, thanks so much for joining us. We tried to get you on the footy show this morning because, uh, mate, how exciting is this, eh? Uh, it's unbelievable. <laughs> and, um, you know, you said it all, the, the, the happiness around the place yeah. and the fact that the community, I mean, I've been working a lot in the rooms the last few weeks, sort of setting up with, with a lot of good people, and people have just wandered through the door and have been gobsmacked with what we've got. 
but most importantly, just want to be a part of it. Exactly, exactly. Um, Mate, we um, we mentioned I, uh, I stupidly parked on the other side of the road at the train station um, for the uh, for the people that want to access uh, uh, RF Miles Reserve. It's best if you park on the beach, on the beach side of the uh, of the train station um, and, uh, and then walk down the beautiful access path that brings you straight into uh, what is the uh, the complex here at Seaford. But I was lucky enough, I suppose, at the end of the day, Phil, to walk under the uh, underpass there. And, um, mate, when I when I got through the underpass there and it was – it's just stunning. Like, it really is. It's picturesque. You've got the beautiful new pavilion at the back. It, the scenes are just fantastic. Well, stick around until when we've got our lights on because those windows light up, the rooms light up, oh, the ground wow. lights up. Mate, I'm getting goosebumps. It is just unbelievable. Um, of course, mate, y- your sponsors uh, – Look, let's be honest, all clubs wouldn't be here today without their sponsors, and uh, especially on a day like today. Oh, look, it's it's been super tough. Um, we've had, had sponsors in terms of our operational with Universal Plumbing, um, you know, Can't Tear Them, our local member, I mean, Drummond's, there's so many. There's, well, our sponsorship's gone through the roof this yeah, year. It's been yep. really good. Franks and then, Mazda, uh, Impact, you know, Drummond, Promac, um, you know, we've had uh, Moravian Cabinets, long-time sponsor. There's so many of them, and this, we're so grateful to them. And then on top of that, we've we've raised um, the best part of 50 grand to furnish the rooms. Wow. So we've got money. And that's, I believe, Phil, that's just oh, at recent times because it's sort of, you, you got notification uh, not too long ago that obviously, you you know, you've got these amazing facilities, but you're not going to have anything to put no, in that's them. that's right. You, you think of everything that goes in here from, from a glass in the bar yeah. to, to the furniture, to the fridges. We actually had to fit the whole bar out, the cool room and everything. Um, At so, a huge expense. Yeah, and a lot of shopping. I've learned a lot about <laughs> but, um I've made some mistakes probably along yeah, the way. Yeah, no, that's all right, mate. You're the top of the table. Uh, no one comes at you. Uh, so, you know, it's been so heartwarming that people are prepared to commit and they still want to keep doing it. Exactly. I mean, we're we're going to grow this place even more. You know, the girls this morning I had my heart in my throat at three o'clock in the morning. I was bucking it down with rain yeah. and I knew our netballers would be out in the elements. Yeah, I mean, well, the 17s would have started at, um, what, eight at about, uh, I think, quarter to nine in the well, morning, that's, aren't that's they? that's a scheduled start. But yep. um, sadly, we haven't got 17s this year. But, yep. but um, you know, we'll build a shelter at some stage. Yeah. We'll, we'll do some things along the way. But we're going to, we're going to, we just got to ride this wave. We've, Absolutely, we've um, we'll we've... take advantage of it too, isn't it? That's what it's more about yeah, as well. Yeah, yeah. Um, so if you're looking at becoming a um, a major sponsor or a sponsor for a football club, um, Seaford Football Netball Club at the moment's where it's happening. Uh, we spoke to Peter Murphy, uh, Phil, on the uh, the pregame show thanks to TV Magic, and and what she was able to um, she she was able to sort of uh, give us an idea and map out what took place to be able to get. Uh, not necessarily today happening, but but where we are, yeah. and and uh, local government obviously starting at the football clubs, um, you know the the uh, Seaford Football Netball Club, local government, state government, and I uh, know federal. Uh, federal have it, had a hand in it as well. But if it wasn't for if it wasn't for you know. Uh, as I as I mentioned to Peter, a full house. Yeah. Um, if it wasn't for a full house, it uh, it would have been something uh, pretty special. Yeah, G- genuine genuine partnerships across them and and the club. And I got to say, with the likes of Sonia Kilkenny and Peter Murphy, yeah, they're real people. They're yep. real community people. Exactly. They're here watching the footy. They appreciate community footy. Yep. And you know the people appreciate them being here as well. Absolutely. Um, I'm, and I might say, you know, in terms of sponsorship or future sponsorship. We've signed over 500 members. We tipped over today, so and that's wow. still going. So that's really good. It is. It's and, fantastic. And thanks for you guys to come here because that that gives us a bit of profile. Mate, thanks for celebrating. It's a, it's a real honour when we're asked. Um, you know, we have to force ourselves for bond clubs sometimes, but it's a real honour to be asked to be here today and and celebrate what is going to go down in history as a as a massive event for the uh, the Seaford Football Netball Club. So we thank it you is. sincerely, mate. Thank you. Well, uh, well, have we've just started time. off the uh, the third third quarter action here at uh, Some of all, I'd like to thank uh, Phil, of course, the uh, the vice pres of the Seaford. Football Netball Club, uh, Vossi. 
I um I very much no no it's fine. I very much enjoy his company and uh, he speaks so well and he and he bleeds Seaford Football Netball Club. And Seaford need to get it their act together in this third quarter. Seemingly the scoring end is this end, the right end end, the Seaford right end of the ground. Um, Mornington up by 23 points. In the AFL, I can tell you that the North Melbourne side are up by 13 points against Gold Coast. Bloody Gold Coast. They should never be in the competition. Oh, jeez. Wow. Tasmania wow. should be in. Yeah, I tend to agree. But wasn't there something happened this week, wasn't there, about... Um, there was a little bit of back and forth about Gold Coast Suns and... and, uh, and and Tasmania. Tasmania are looking to go for a licence for an AFL side. I think that's a, a marvellous thing, personally. Yeah, a wonderful thing to see Tasmania in the well, AFL. It takes you, I mean, on, from Melbourne, obviously, is different, um, but it takes you about 40 minutes, 50 minutes, between 40 and 50, um, to get from Melbourne to Tasmania. How long does it take you to get to bloody Brisbane and Bris Vegas and the Sunshine Coast and all that kind of caper? Yeah. Anyway, back to this game. We'd see if it need the first goal in this third quarter as they go inside attacking 50. They're going to get the opportunity. They're going to get the goal. And they get the goal through Tuchel, who scores two minutes into the second second half and see if it up to 4 11 35. Mornington are eight goals. Four, I think it is, 52. tuchel has been pressing and pressing and pressing all day. He's been good off the ball as well as on the ball, and he's uh, been rewarded with a major there. Uh, well done, Tuchel. Well done, Seaford, uh, for a great start for the third quarter, Vossi. It's very, very good. We've got a ball game. We've, uh, we're missing the scoreboard at the moment. No, no we're, the, yep, we're not, thanks to uh, Ray White of Frankston. So... <laughs> Broomhead with the ball for Super gets a defensive hand pass. I hate it when you forward. two are up and about. I really do. I much prefer it when you're under the pump and you're stressed Morning because it's like the peanut gallery behind us, I tell you. Morning going to get the free kick through Speedy. He goes towards Calder, who has taken the mark, I think. Yes, he, he has. has. He's come up with a pill. Beautiful mark. Seaford looking at conceding here. Mornington answering back. They're not going to go away, Mornington. Jackson Calder on a on a difficult forty five degree angle. He's not going to. Uh, he's going to kick it from about twenty out from where I'm standing. Uh, distance definitely not a, a problem here, but accuracy, uh, the angle might uh, might be troublesome. We'll see how we go. As we're in a good position to follow this one through. Three, four, five, six, seven steps. Let's loose. It looks like a rubbery sort of kick, but he gets the job done either way. Mornington answer back with a fantastic goal. Almost minutes after, you're listening and watching RPPFN, the voice of Peninsula Football. Do you have TV antenna or reception issues? Need to wall mount your TV or want extra TV or data points? Then call TV Magic, Frankston and the Peninsula. Call Clint for a free quote on 0484 395 555. TV Magic, we make all your TV problems disappear. A station sponsor. Welcome back here to the RF Miles Reserve and Seaford have kicked one goal in this quarter and Mornington have kicked one. So as you were at half time, it's still Mornington up by 23 points as the kick goes towards the centre of the ground. It's marked there by Warwick Miller for Mornington. He gets it and goes in short, looking there for a teammate. No mark taken. Ball knocked down. Chance for Fisher. Gets it off. Now quick kick inside attacking 50. Oh! Tickle going up for the mark. Couldn't take it. Then showed a, bit of, just showed a bit of candy with the ball, just sort of saying, oh. look at that, boys. But it was a poor kick. He let himself down. Mark taken in defence. Now Mornington switch play towards the broadcast back pocket. It's Dinger. They've got the loose man created. They're spreading yeah. really well here, Mornington, Through off the ball. Bold it is who goes down the line towards centre wing. Going up and he'll win out here, Cameron. He's very good in the one-on-one -on -one contest oh. here in terms of uh, putting pressure on his opponent. Still an opportunity. Mornington over the top, and then they'll go in to goal oh. and miss through the agency of Brown. Brown just unlucky. Well, not unlucky there, just unskilled. Um, he backed himself from that spot. It's a difficult kick, and he had uh, Jackson Calder just off the ball, um, but also uh, also Dalziel just off the ball there. Uh, maybe they were the option rather than going for the big sticks. Anyway, Seaford in possession of the ball. Pavilion side, long kick, 
punch from Seaford. Fantastic defensive football here. They regain possession. Still in Seaford's possession. Ball, sloppy hand pass, goes out of bounds. Umpire to throw it back in. What I'm liking about Mornington at the moment, Vossi, is they're spread off the ball. They're quick to uh, they're quick to act where Seaford. They just have don't have the responsiveness at the moment. The backs, I'm I'm liking the backs a lot of Mornington. Uh, at the helm, of course, is uh, our great mate Sean and uh, and Lockie Susovich. Ball going out of bounds again. Umpire to throw it back in. Got some fantastic. Vision coming to you live from RF Miles Reserve, thanks to TV Magic. Of course, they're our match day sponsors, among others. And some exciting news coming up, boys. I meant to mention it on the uh, on the uh, Topun Football Show this you morning. You're engaged? No. Oh, good lord. What are you? That is a proper stitch up. You, you two, peanut gallery, don't encourage him for God's sakes. No, no. Let me Stop be the it. First to congratulate I, you I'm <laughs> Well, you wanted to cut her from the sheep, but uh, at beaches, you want me to get her at beaches? There's no chance no, that's I, happening. I, I'll I, give you the red hot. I tip. said, you, I didn't say I'm taking her to beaches. I said, you're taking her to yeah, beaches. No, nah, I wouldn't subject her to the filth that happens there. Um, Back to my point, please, lads. Uh, the exciting news at RPP, the van is back. The turd has been polished. And I tell you what, if you get the opportunity to come to our Wilson's Road studio, it looks an absolute treat. Uh, we will have a big unveiling. Uh, we'll have hopefully sponsors there. Um, but it's our new outside broadcast van, at, uh, and she looks absolutely beautiful. And what a team effort. There's a kick in towards full forward for Seaford by Fisher towards Walton, but the ball will go over for boundary throne. Where are we at next week, incidentally? Okay, it's just uh, the, the unveiling of the van next week by the sound Perhaps. Of it. I think that might be the case, actually. Uh, she's uh, the polished turds going in for a uh, for a roadie just to make sure she's safe as there's been a quick kick inside 50 for Seaford. Met heavily was that player. Picked up by Mornington. Mornington in absolute, well, lost for words, Fossey. <laughs> Walton wanted a free kick there at full forward, but he didn't get it. He, he might have been tackled high, but he might, might have also uh, exaggerated the contact a little bit. And can I just say the Southern umpires have spoken to, from AFL South East and the umpires in, in uh, Darren Holt. Earlier in the year, spoken to him a Holt couple of here. times. I saw him earlier, and uh, but it's great to see, great to see Jason Hughes out there today. Jason Hughes, as I said, is a is a um, is one of the best umpires the Southern umpires have had over a long time. He, he moved he? away from there in 2010, I think. He just told me before. Did a game a couple of years ago. I think he's done oh, two or three a... games in tw in 11 years. So just good to see him down having a run this afternoon. Oh, yeah. Yes, yes, yes. Seaford Football Netball Club just looking after us. Some beautiful looking chicken tandoori wraps and oh, salivating, absolutely salivating. A long bomb from uh, from Seaford didn't pay off. Ball goes out of bounds. Umpire to throw back in and does so. Met heavily there was Mornington in speedy. Speedy goes to ground. Ball wrapped up. Umpire to come and throw it back in, Michael. Lang Warner in front too. Oh, it was coming. Margin is 24 points here in the match of the day at the RF Miles Reserve. And is an opportunity now for Macklin Rainey to get his hand pass over it. It uh, overran his... Teammate there, so Mornington through smart goes out towards centre wing. Jackson Calder, long way down the ground, gets the ball knocked away from him there by Doyle over the line for a boundary throw in. Jackson Calder, unlucky there, not to get, not to get a free from an over the shoulder clip around the chops. But as mentioned, the ball goes out. Oh, you've got to stop sneaking up on me, I tell you. I'm jumpy. Don't take the 10. Oh. Well, there's another one. So oh, wow. Well, I know you'll take it. No, no, I'm not taking it. I'm not hungry. You're the, you're the one that's hungry. Have it. I am. But I'm a professional. I'll wait. Uh, look, I'll, I'll cover. I'll cover for two minutes. Don't worry. Two minutes. You reckon that's all it's going to take? No, I'm <laughs> mate. Sorry. I'll be back on air in thirty. Watch me wolf this down. <laughs> mark taken. Great defensive mark by Lockie Susovich. Quick to play on though. Finding his teammate there in Richardson. Richardson met heavily. 
a great attacking football in the forward 50 for Seaford. Quick handball, something from nothing, doesn't pay off. Out of bounds Ooh. on the full. I reckon that might have been a point. I almost. think that might. I think that might have been a point too. Oh, if they win by a point, Vossi, we know who to blame. What's your badge number there, sir? I know. I know what it is down there. It's the umpires coach and Troy Bell Chambers down there. But I reckon. I reckon Troy. That was a. I reckon that was a point. But anyhow, Kane to bring the ball back in. What's he going to do? He's going to go down the line looking for his teammate there. Oh, good, good attempt at a mark was Miller. Miller's been good today, wearing the long sleeves. I've not just noticed like he's had the, had the haircut. He's sort of got the... the he has. He, he has. Sort of, sort of got the... Uh, That's yuck. Just shaved Lockie the sides. Sasevich, you're on notice and, and for a yuck thick, haircut. Thick and long in the middle. You did it last night. Oh. During the Richmond match. Was that during the... Was, was that, that, was that, that in match last was night? That, was that in between two goals? Oh, wow. That was That was... Amazing that performance last night. Oh, Seaford in possession of the ball at the moment dropped. Play on the call through the middle of the ground. Mornington. Heath with the ball gives it off, looking for an option. Jackson Calder comes out like a freight train to Marks. Inside 50. He's going to kick this from about 40, maybe 42. Have to get the yardstick out. I like him from here. Really I do like angle. him from here. It's his preferred side. He's a beautiful kick of the football. He wants another one to his name. He's already kicked two. 9 5 59, play Seaford 4 11 35. We've played 11, nearly 12 minutes of this third quarter as he sets sail. Good looking kick. Umpire works a little, but it goes through the hay diddle diddle. You are listening and watching RPPFM, the voice of Peninsula Football. Do you have TV antenna or reception issues? Need to wall mount your TV or want extra TV or data points? Then call TV Magic, Frankston and the Peninsula. Call Clint for a free quote on 0484 395 555. TV Magic, we make all your TV problems disappear. A station sponsor. Welcome back here to the RF Miles Reserve as uh, Sort Pass is just stuffing his face here at the moment. Oh, that's that's just disgusting sort pass. That is absolutely disgusting. I bet you didn't use that party trick when you when uh, when you met Ash. That's for sure. There's a long kick up towards full forward by Bird towards Calder. Couldn't take the mark. Ball on the ground. Still an opportunity inside Mornington's fifty, but Seaford will clear finally. And they go out towards Racing, who hasn't been as effective as what Damien Racing usually is. Ball out. They need a bit more from him. Ball over the top towards Braun. He was tackled. Still at half forward here. That might be in the back. Or is it the umpire said, no, that's holding the ball. Free kick to Seaford. The Mornington player apparently just sat on the ball. And uh, well, I reckon the Seaford player sat on his back. But anyhow, um, there's an opportunity. Scully, he went for the goal, but he was out of play. And it was off target anyhow. So... Uh, the ball to be thrown back into play right next to the Seaford goal, going to the Seaford drain into the ground in the third quarter. Margin is 30 points in favour of the Mornington Bulldogs as the ball comes back into play. 10-5-65 face plays 4-11-35. Seaford up, of course, by 17 points a quarter time. In fact, it might have been 19 points a quarter time, actually, and uh, they're now down by 30. So... The second and third quarter has all belonged to Morning to nine goals to one in that time. And they just need to uh, just hold them out this quarter, just keep the crowd out of it, and uh, and Mornington should go and have a victory from here. But if Seaford can somehow get that crowd involved, get that margin down by a couple of goals up to three-quarter time, it's certainly anyone's game. And there are two even sides. It's second versus third after all. Seaford second, Mornington third. Winner will go a game clear of the other tonight. So Seaford with the opportunity to go inside attacking 50. That's a mark, but it's... If they paid 50, they paid 50. And I'm confused. Some might, some might, some might say that uh, that's not a surprise. But that is a shot at goal there for Seaford by race, and he's put it through for a goal. And the margin is back to 24 points, and I am still confused over that decision. Okay. 
There you have it. You can't do that. How was that? It was actually really good. I'm not sure what that that is, though. I'll get a photo of it and put it on our socials. Some of all up by 11 points at three-quarter time. Might be a meat trafe. You can guess what it is. And uh, we are streaming live into Mackay. Pie Man has sent me a message coming in well on the big screen in Mackay. Keep it up. Thanks, Pie Man, for tuning in. I'm sure you'll be uh, having a nice uh, nice froth or two this afternoon watching at home. Cameron with the ball now. Mark inside 50, directly in front. He's going to have a set shot here. Backs himself. No runners. So his teammates have faith in him as well. He's going to kick this ball, as mentioned, from about 45 directly in front. I think, I think it's going to test him. The distance, that is, as he sets sail and just caught in the wind, held up a little bit, pushes the ball right. Two for a minor. 5-11-41 plays Mornington. 10-7-67. We paid 16 minutes, nearly 16 and a half minutes in this third quarter. Seaford with possession at the moment. Far side of the ground, wing position. Moving the ball beautifully at the moment. Looking for and finding Walton. But the ball beats them over the line. Umpire is going to come in and throw the ball up. Out in the full. Out in the full, sorry. Just had my head dipped. Thank you, though, Michael. No, eating another one of those rolls. No, I'm looking at the, the next one, though. Don't you worry about that. The vegetarian option. See, they've obviously been sitting in the uh, canteen for a little while. No one's keen on the vegetarian. That's okay. I'll take the veg out. Every long, day. Long looking kick. for Macklin Rain, finding him. So Macklin Rain goes in short, looking there and oh, finding his teammate. Mark. That's a mark to Fisher. They can get it and go here, see, for they just morning to just flooding back at the moment. They just got to try and move that ball a bit quicker. Yeah, they are. Look at numbers here. And they've got uh, about four or so zoned off here, Mornington, of their players. As the long kick comes in towards full forward. Oh, the, the ball back. drops back. Opportunity off the ground. It's rushed through for a point. Miller. Miller there just saving the day. Uh, Broomhead was sniffing it. Took two or three toe pokes, but of course Miller from Mornington just nurses the ball over the line through from minor. So a long kick out of defence there for Mornington by Heath out towards half back. Oh, great mark, Jackson Calder Is in it? a pack. And no one's uh, no one's fall to the centre square though. No one's within eighty metres of Mornington's goal now. They start to sort of Flood. couple try and couple try and push back. Bird took the mark and then ran into the fence. Now he goes in short. Looking for and finding Sussovich. the newly the newly hair tutted Lockie Susovich. It's a disgrace, Lachlan. There's a short pass to Miller. Miller oh, can get it and turn and, turn and then does a mongrel kick. Absolute shocker there by <laughs> by one of the better uses of the ball. You can't do a, a beautiful mark like that and then a blind turn and then mung it off the boot. Short pass in and the mark has been taken there on centre wing for Mornington by Jake Smart. Who can go long, and they do start to sort of Centering get back there now, Mornington. They go towards. Why would you? Well, why would you go towards the big ruckman? Exactly. It's uh, it was a sort of a dumb tick there by by Smart. Well, that, yeah, like the. Uh, it's not smart. Yeah, it wasn't, it was, it was a smart option, it was, was a, it? It was a dumb tick by Smart. It really was. Well, especially when you had uh, other options there, you kick it straight down the throat of Macklin Rain when he's standing on a man that's about five foot eleven. Seaford's number one ruckman, Lockie Susovich, with the ball opposite side of the ground, which is the uh, railway side of the ground. Long kick down the line, looking for, again, Jackson Calder. Lucky, Lux of fortune there. Macklin Rain with first possession. Jackson Calder ends up with the ball. Quick kick inside 50 for Mornington, only to be met by Seaford's defenders. Great defensive work there by Seaford with the ball now. Half forward flank for Mornington. Looking to switch here, and they're on. They are absolutely on. The switch has worked. Now, Lachlan with the ball. He goes inbound, looking for, oh, but not finding. Teekle being cut off there by Mornington Defence. Jeez, they've been good today. Mornington quick to play on. Oh, centimetres, centimetres. Umpire in a good position. Well marked. Mornington still in possession of the football. Short kick, not 15. Play on's a call. Seifer with the ball now. Quick hand pass. Didn't pay off. Seaford still with possession. Scrubby, though, really scrubby. Inside 50 for Seaford. 
Seaford still with the ball. Good tackle applied. Quick kick off the boot. And through for a goal. Something from nothing. It's happening today, Michael. Filipponi. Filipponi with that kick. Just dropped off one, one, one kick back. Brilliant. Who's the goal umpire? I don't think it's important. There's something happening with the goal umpire. Get yourself a microphone if you want to talk. It's a quick kick out of the pack there. Made something out of nothing. So Seaford back to within 18 points. And Who I can tell you what, at Marvel, St. Philippine was Philippine a goal. It was. I can tell you at Marvel Stadium, Collingwood and Fremantle, it's uh, level pegging in the last quarter. And North Melbourne up by 11 points against Gold Coast. Oh, Gold Coast. 5 12 48. Trail. It's trailing, sorry, Mornington, 10 6 66. We play 21 minutes. Ball wrapped up in the center of the ground. Umpire to ball it up. Craig getting very excited in the background. He's North oh, Melbourne he's sider North in front. Melbourne, North Melbourne. Oh, yeah. Oh, uh, no, I'm quite fond of the Kangas. Macklin Rain going up against, winning that decisively. Seaford in possession. Pavilion side wing on the run now. One bounce. Gets a kick off looking for inbound. Only to be cut off by again. Mornington's defence. Jeez, they've been good today. I'm sorry I keep repeating myself, but they're, they're just that good. The switch is on. Far side of the ground. Half back flank for Mornington. Umpire says move it on. Play on's a call. Does so. Quick kick along the line. Looking for and almost finding Ash. Ash. Ball goes to ground. Another, oh, Tim Broomhead tries to get his hands on ground. Quick hand pass, looking for a goal. Or oh, nearly takes off the umpire's head, but doesn't. Goes through for a minor. Just had a little bit more time there uh, was that young fella. I didn't quite pick up his his uh, his number there, but uh, he could have just stopped and propped and just uh, had a little bit more time. You on, you, you don't have to, you. Bomb Beach, 12, 13, 85, thanks to oh, Solar Hart. And Red Hill, 1, 4, 10. That shows you. The, 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 the monumental task it is to try and beat Bomb Beach at Bomb Beach. And I know Dramana did it in round three, but that is just a that is just a thrashing. Dangerous kick there outside of the goal square, finding Miller. The switch is back on, finding Heath. Heath to Kane. Other side of the group, near side of the ground, broadcast side. Big kick. Two on one competition ball falls short, ends up in Seaford's hands. Wing position, pavilion side of the ground, looking for options here. Mornington flooding, short pass. Finds Lachlan again. Lachlan lets loose from about 40 out. Still in. Lachlan Susovich taps the ball. Great second effort, Chase. Smothered off the boat, three for a point. Thank you, Michael. Devon Meadows up by 24 points. Give us all the scores, please. Did, did you? I think you did. Yeah, I can give you a quick update if yeah, you like, boys. Yeah, thanks, Craig. That'd be uh, great. Division 1, oh. Frankston, YCW, uh, 69, Adeliza, 34, Bond Beach, oh. 85, Red Hill, 10, Dramana, 46, Rosebud, 41, uh, Sorrento, 62, Pines, 46, Frankston Bombers, 90, and Ediasp, 29. Division 2, uh, uh Devon Meadows, 77, oh. Rye, 53. Uh, Hastings, 55. Tie up, 24. Karingal and Chelsea locked up into the oh, fourth God. quarter, 48 all. And Somerville, oh. 68. Lang Warren, 57. I can't work in these conditions. <laughs> oh, mate. 24 minutes into the third quarter. It's all right. It's all right. I'll be professional. I'll, I'll, I'll take control of this short pass. Broomhead's got a, a high kick to full forward, going back the ball. Is it going to bounce through? It's bounced through for a goal. It bounced at the top of the goal square. It beat the pack, and it just dribbled and dribbled, and it beat the morning to defence to the line, and it's gone through for a goal. So Tim Broomhead with his second goal of the afternoon, and 7-14-56, Seaford Mornington 10-6. I think it is 66, and that yeah, is... Six. Sorry. 66 pick up sticks. Yeah, no, that's all right. So that was a good goal by Tim Broomer. That's his second for the afternoon. <laughs> so ball back to the middle. So Mornington were five goals in front. They're now back to it's now back to ten points. So all of a sudden Seaford have 
just asking a few questions of Mornington and uh, well they did well let's be honest this is the scoring in this right end in Mornington yeah, there's no question it. Mornington will have it in the last quarter free kick being given to Mornington for a push in the back going to Bird he's been very good Bird but umpire wants Bird to come back over the mark so ball's going to be brought back so just a little bit of a lull lights are on here at Seaford so I'm pretty happy about that because I've been keen to see how good the lights are here. So the lights have come on. It's a little bit overcast here in Seaford. Mornington in possession of the ball. Ding has been asked to move it on. Does so. Short pass. Finds Crank. Miller just tunnelled under the ball then, and rightly so has been paid a free kick. Rowan in a fantastic position. Now, if I was Miller here, Vossi, I'd just, I'd just centre the ball, top of the goal square stuff. You've got Jackson Corder for the lead. Short pass. Goes against everything I said. Finds Speedy. Speedy, well, I don't know what, what that was for because he's on a more difficult angle and is at the same distance. Speedy lets loose. Oh, jeez. I thought he was going to make the distance there. Sorry, I went quiet there, listeners, but I was watching that uh, that ball. Looked like it was going to sail through, but it just dropped short. Right. See, I'm just getting my breath right. back. Sorry, mate. That was... Um, if I, uh, if I had a COVID mask or some kind of mask to stop the poo particles from entering my body, I would have, because that was what was uh, classed as a rank. That reminded me of Red Hill all over again. <laughs> that was sewerage. Oh. That was the sewerage, Red Hill. <laughs> oh, no, it wasn't. I called your gut sewerage that day, and it's sewerage today. Oh, well. Margin is 11 points here in the match of the day. We're late in the third quarter, and the lights are already on gagging. here. Because it is getting game. quite dark here at uh, RF Miles Reserve. Long kick oh, to half. Play on to call. Sosevich. Lockie Sosevich thought he marked that ball, and I think he did as well. Oh. He was actually fighting with his own teammate. He was, but he had one and two picks of the cherry. Sosevich in short. Mark taken by Kalen Bird, who's got it on the half back line, right below where we're broadcasting here this afternoon. Mornington up by 11 points. I'll be happy to hold this lead. What I don't a... want to concede any more. Heading up towards three-quarter time. Ball off the pack. Braun sees it over for a boundary throw-in. You don't want to concede any more. In that, and you can tell when the scoreboard's getting uh, the scoreboard's getting brighter. As, as numbers are sort of coming out a lot brighter, you can certainly tell that the light's getting darker here, which it is at the... That's why they've got the lights on. Funny that, isn't it? Yeah, it is. <laughs> Sandra Sully with the late news. It's A equals, a equals, <laughs> a equals MC squared, isn't it? Yes. It all, it all fits together somehow. Lockie Sasevich just letting his player off the leash there, Lachlan. He's been good all day, Lockie. Um, sorry, uh, yeah, Lockie Sasevich. I reckon the boys are going to put blonde tips through his hair. There you go. That's that's my next tip. It almost looks like a perm because he's got a natural curl. It's even more natural now. It's like a permed mullet. I bet. I, I, I bet. I bet it's you. Dirty. It's I dirty bet you there's hair. a lady or two that likes likes it the way it is. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. He'd cut him. He'd cut him from the rug. Don't you worry about that. Like his old man did. Quite a few years ago. Oh, he likes that one. He likes it. <laughs> I'll have you. Uh, yeah, no, just you. Yeah, yeah I'll, I'll, come, I'll come back for you after. I <laughs> <laughs> just cutting them from the herd. So, Mornington to bring the ball out of the fence, looking to go down the corridor, but only to be met by Seaford's attacking. Poor kick. Goes down straight down the throat of Speedy. Speedy quick to play on. Finding Miller. Molly, Miller balks. Finding Speedy. Speedy long kick out of the fence. Looking for a pack. Pack fly. Ball teetering on going out of bounds and does so. What's the umpire going to do, Vossi? He's going to throw it back in. They've been good today, the officiators. Still with a quarter and a half. We played 29 minutes in this quarter. Time on in the last quarter at Marvel. Free you up by a point. 10 7 67. Plays 7 15 57. Pies won't lose it from here. Under the helm of Robert Harvey. The next safe boy. Yes. And there is the three quarter time siren here at. RF Miles Reserve. What a stunning picture it is here from up top of the pavilion. It's been a pleasure today, and I will be invited here any day of the week. 
has just said 10 7 67 play Seaford 7 15 57 we played just over 29 minutes in that quarter uh, it uh, has been an exceptional quarter of football but we might take a quick break and be back with the uh, three quarter time wrap up you're listening and watching the R double PFM toe punt oh geez toe punt footy show am I going There's a quiet revolution happening on the rooftops of Australia. And at Solarheart, we're proud to be leading the charge. One home, one family, one solar panel at a time. Helping smart Aussies make a real difference to the planet. Cutting the energy bills and connecting them to their smart energy future. Get smart, get Solarheart. More and more people with a taste for quality are shopping at Eliza Meats. Kevin and his lean team pride themselves on the finest cuts. From juicy steaks and roasts to high-grade mince and sausages, and Eliza Meats are the gourmet specialists. Inquire about Eliza Meats higher by 9787 4473 for a mouth-watering meal fit for a king. It's all at Eliza Meats. See our sponsor Kevin at Eliza Meats, 112B Mount Eliza Way, a station sponsor. Do you have TV antenna or reception issues? Need to warm out your TV or want extra TV or data points? Then talk to TV Magic, Frankston and the Peninsula. TV Magic are your local TV and antenna specialists. We look after everything. TV, home theatre, satellite, plus all electrical work. Visit us at tvmagic.com.au or contact Clint for a free quote on 0484 395 555. TV Magic. We make all your TV problems disappear. A station sponsor. Brighton Auto is your Bayside and Peninsula automotive one-stop shop. This all-in-one award-winning Mitsubishi, MG and Sanyong dealership is also offering Holden certified parts and service. They have a huge range of new demo and used vehicles plus factory trained service technicians. Your proud RPPFM station sponsor Brighton Auto will also ensure your dream car is well within reach and kept in great hands. Why not visit brightonauto.com.au or find them at 67 Nepean Highway, Elsenwick, LMCT 10680. And welcome back to RF Miles Reserve here at Seaford where it is bustling scenes of fun and happiness. And if you're the Grinch, you'd be vomiting like I nearly did through that third quarter, smelling what seeped out of what was only to be described as sewerage. Oh, anyway, goal scorers for today thus far, Michael. <laughs> Get on with it. We're talking football. We're not talking sewerage. <laughs> we're, 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 uh, we're a football just commentary. Before you do a get, uh, commentary just before you do get started, uh, I've got some fantastic scenes from the middle of the uh, the Seaford huddle. Uh, the captain there having a fair bit to say. Herbert, um, Mornington, beautiful scenes of Mornington now. Goosey being very vocal and, uh, and just thrashing his arms around. He knows his boys can do it. They believe they can do it. And quite frankly, right at this point in time, so do I, Michael. Yeah, they're going with the scoring in, so they should they should win this from here, Mornington. But Seaford have had uh, five more scoring shots, but find themselves 10 points behind. 
Goal kick is to three quarter time for Mornington. Jackson Calder's kick three. Adrian Speedy's kick two. Singles each to Bird, Cameron, Brown, Miller, and North. And for C for two goals to Tim Broomhead. Singles each to Fisher, Rayson, Filipponi, Tickle, and Ravenall. We haven't heard what his injury is, but he was. Uh, he was in a lot of pain. Yeah, no, he was. Uh, he was in a lot when of I, pain. I went down. I went down the umpires' rooms before, and I just said a quick hello to to Jason Hughes. I haven't seen Jason for a long time, known him for a long time, and uh, he was saying that uh, yeah, no, he was he was very much screaming. He was very much in pain out there, and uh, wasn't a good look. So hopefully, whatever the injury is, hopefully it can get sorted out. And uh, um, yeah, hope what it well. Do we think it was a dislocation or what do yeah, we actually Yeah, no, do? I think when you uh, when you tend to do a, a ligament injury in a knee, you're not necessarily in that much pain. Um, the kneecap was in a in an awkward looking position. It uh, didn't look normal uh, with the amount of pain that he was in. Oh, I'm going to call a, a dislocation of the neus capus. Is my technical the neus capus? My technical terminology. Fair enough. A dislocation of the knees, Capus. All right. Up Siren sounds. Puts it up to start the last quarter. It is a 10 point lead to Mornington. Winner is second tonight. And Lang Warren are behind. So all of a sudden, the loser of this game will, might find themselves only one game clear of Somerville. And Somerville without Paul Fermanis today. That's, yes. that's a good performance. What is the score in that game, Craig A, please? Uh, the current score is uh, 13 987 Somerville, 9-10-64, Lang Warren. Wow, way. I wasn't paying attention then. I was looking at the uh, beautiful vision on the TV Magic replay screen. 23, 23 points is the margin in that game between C for, uh, Somerville and also Lang Warren. Like I said, Somerville, they're playing obviously some very good football, but on Lang Warren's side of things, it won't do them any harm if they do have a loss because you, at some point in the season, you're going to find yourself in that position. And they're pacing the problem today. Mind you, game not over yet. Maybe still time for them to come back too. So ball up. And the umpire says I'm going to ball it up once again. Macklin Rain's been very good in ruck today. Apart from that shank of a kick that he shouldn't have attempted being a ruckman. Macklin Rain's been very good. Mornington in position now. They're looking like they're going to go forward again. Great tackle applied there by Seaford. The pressure is on around the contest. Mornington somehow come out with it. Quick kick. By Bird. By Bird. Bird is the word. Only to be chopped off by Seaford's defence. Well done, Seaford. Touched off the boot. Umpire is saying no mark paid. Bird, Bird, Bird is the word. Who sang that? Bird, bird, bird. Was it an ad or a song? I think it was a song. Was it? I'm sure it was a song. I know it was turned into an ad. Big punch there from Mornington Defence. Pressing, pressing, pressing. Tackle applied. Umpire blew his whistle. My ball. As mentioned in the third quarter, going into the fourth, the umpiring's been good today. Been fair and consistent across both ends of the ground. Macklin Rain winning that one again. Broomhead comes out with it. Quick hand pass, quick kick. Goes forward, nothing there. Mornington to clear. Shanky looking kick ball may beat them. No, still in play, but does now. Umpire to come in and throw the ball up. Centre wing position, railway side of the ground. Courtesy of Solar Heart, if North Melbourne lose from the position they're in, uh, they will spew because they have had nine more scoring shots and they're only nine points clear. 9-18 to 9-9 is the score and there's three minutes to go. Thanks to Solar Heart, you're watching the game again. <sighs> no, no, I'm getting an update on the score. I'm not watching the game, I'm watching this game. Well, there's apps to get scores. You've, yeah. You, it's on. Oh, but... Oh, so, sorry, that, that, uh, that little jack that came in next door just turned it on, so sorry about that. <laughs> you, you. <laughs> Thank you, Nipples. For our listeners that didn't hear that, he just wants to make sure that's the only thing that's turned on is your telecommunication device and not you. Well, the nickname you're, like Nipples, you're, you're, you're going to be a fair chance you're your going to be. Your pheromones are strong enough. Speedy. There's a chance here for Speedy. 
And he's kicked a goal. The first for the fourth and puts Mornington a little bit ahead. You're all listening and watching RPPFM, the voice of Peninsula football. Have TV antenna or reception issues? Need to wall mount your TV or want extra TV or data points? Then call TV Magic, Frankston and the Peninsula. Call Clint for a free quote on 0484 395 555. TV Magic, we make all your TV problems disappear. A station sponsor. And welcome back to RF Miles Reserve, where we just witnessed a beautiful goal by Mr. Aaron. Is it Aaron? No, I did it again, didn't I? Adrian. Adrian Speedy. 11-7-73 plays a Seaford 7-15-57. Fourth quarter, and we played four and a half minutes. Still plenty of football to play. Seaford still pressing. They don't look like they've lost this game by any stretch of the means. They are still well and truly in this. Tim Broomhead on the ball, as you'd expect. They're not going to rest him now. There's plenty of options. Mornington looking at pressing forward again, and they do so. Another quick from about 50 metres, and they've just put on another one. It is an absolute show here at RF Miles Reserve, Michael. Speedy again by the look of it. It is speedy again. Kicks his fourth, and he might be a contender. No. No. Nah. Okay. You do want the meat tray, you greedy bugger. <laughs> it's going to be a close call, though, between Lockie Susovic, the general down back, and that man there, Adrian Speedy, kicking his fourth. He's two away from a, an official bag. Has he got it in him? 12-7-79 plays Seaford, 7-15-57. Umpire to throw the ball back up. And once again, Macklin Rain wins that one. But, uh, of course, he's been dominant today. But... Mornington just rucking to him. Oh, Mornington on again here. High. It has. There's been a free paid for a high tackle, and rightfully so. Nearly got his head taken off there. It was Falvo. What? Oh, okay. Yep, you're free to go. Michael is just stepping outside of our broadcast position to hopefully go and drop the kids off at the pool. No. <laughs> no. no. Well, you need to. The ball has uh, the balls. There has been a free kick, as mentioned, for a high tackle directly in front. He's going to kick this from about 20 out. And he does so and goes straight through the hay diddle diddle. And joining us for the first time in the commentary position is Peter Sasevich. Geez, uh, Mornington have uh, really jumped to this, haven't they? They have, mate. They've absolutely taken the game on. Talking to Sean this morning, Suss, I know you're here bright and early, mate, sitting up, and I appreciate you very much for doing that. But uh, Sean said they love being the underdogs, and wow, we haven't they been the underdogs this morning? Just, it's an absolute training camp almost. Just watch uh, Macklin Rain in the ruck here. He's not, uh, he's not being as physical as he normally is. No, no, he's not, but he's still winning um, the clearances. So just watch, just watch his movement. He's not even getting off the ground. Does he need? Oh, oh well, he just got, off the just got off the ground. Be mindful. He's probably about 110 kegs, if not a little bit more. No, but it's just straight, the he struggles bounce. to get off the ground. Broomhead, uh, sorry, Tickle there, met oh. heavily. Great tackle. He's been pinged for dropping the ball. Mornington quick to play on. Kick to half forward flank for Mornington. Great pressure applied by Seaford. Ball looks to be, oh, is that deliberate? It is deliberate. A deliberate's been paid. Free kick going to Mornington. Oh, it's all happening here at RF Miles Reserve. Bald with the ball now. Looking to centre it. Poor kick, though. Jackson. Oh, Jackson oh, nearly gets his high. head ripped off. Umpire in a poor position. Didn't see it. Ball beats them over the line. Should have seen that because the tackle went up and the tackle went up on him. He didn't move. He, didn't, he tried to get through, but there was a tackle that clipped him on the side of the head. We are having, uh, we're getting some fantastic vision here today at RF Miles Reserve for the first game at this beautiful new complex. Thanks to everyone involved. Mornington looking exceptionally classy here. Seaford, I don't think they've got too many answers right now. Mornington doing everything right. They're everywhere they need to be. Free kick being paid for what looks like a throw going Seaford's way. Looks like, no, a little bit of a howdy-do between the two small men. Free kick's going to Scully. Scully quick to play on. Donning the helmet. Borks, one bounce, two bounce. Kicks from about 50 out. 
Hasn't got the legs. Quick to play on out of something. Nothing goes through for a minor. Oh, see for the building. Let down, though. North Great Melbourne, defensive pressure. North Melbourne, number nine points. Three medal, one by 12. Great game of local football we are seeing here. 13 7 85. Plays Seaford 7 16 58. We've, we've played eight, nearly nine minutes in this quarter. Heavy tackle. Ball goes out of bounds. And if craigo has got any scores, maybe maybe we've got any close games happening. Craigo, give us those. Uh, just that game at Somerville, uh, 14 10 95, Somerville and Langwarren, 11 10 76. The other close game there in uh, Div 2 is Karingal, 9 7 61, Chelsea, 9 7 61. Another point, and they'll still be level. Short pass. Yes. The other close game, boys, is Dramana and Rosebud. Uh, Dramana 7, 11, 53. Rosebud 7, 7, 49. Uh, Pines in front over Sorrento. Oh, wow. 11, 7, 73, 10, 8, 68. Wow, we. Ball at the moment inside Seaford's 50 metre arc. They are pressing here. A great entry there. Ball being chopped off by. Seaford's defence to surge the ball forward again. But Mornington just have the answers here. Defensively, they're a marvellous football team and they're displaying it today and doing so right in front of my eyes now. Only to be chopped off, free kick going to Mornington. Seaford are trying everything. They're throwing everything they have at them. But Mornington have all the answers at the moment. Oh, <laughs> There's a – oh, Michael, Michael, is she here? Is she here? What are you talking about? Who am I talking about? Oh, I'm here. Oh, boys, I'm here. Oh, 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 oh. God. Is it the fat lady? The fat lady's singing. It looks like it's all over. People are looking in to make sure that I'm not strangling you, short pass. <laughs> what do you mean? Oh, they're just looking in and go, what the hell is that? Well, they noise? were trying to get an eye on the fat lady, mate. That's oh. what they were doing. She's elusive, though. You'll never catch her. Mornington in possession of the ball at the moment. She is a proverbial phantom, isn't she? Oh, mate, she's got a fan club. She's uh, She started up an OnlyFans page, too. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yep. She's got about 200,000 followers. She's quite the juggernaut. You reckon you're the juggernaut, the fat lady. Drop her a line. Tim Broomhead set shot on goal across the face. Pack fly. There's been a mark taken. We love something from nothing at RPP, and that's what's just been given. There was an impossible sure. shot on goal from Tim Broomhead, and it's gone across the face only to be marked. Fisher with the ball at the moment. He took the mark. He wheels around on the left and goes bang and misses it. So all the answers coming by Mornington. We might as well go home because she doesn't often get it wrong, the fat lady. She knocked on the door. We let her in. And she, we let her in and she opened up those magnificent pipes and she gave us all her glory. So long kick out of defence. Mornington up by 26 points, 12 and a half minutes in the last quarter. They really should go on and win from here. Mornington, they're playing some... She doesn't get it wrong. Some good football, especially to this right-hand end, Mornington, the second right end. An honourable mention to the fat lady. It shows courage to come to a home ground and sing for the opposition. Long kick towards full forward or centre half forward. Ball off the pack. A chance to Cameron. A hand pass to what? Oh, Jimmy Cameron. Oh, his own off ball the in. ground. It's a oh, goal off the ground. Went to hand pass it to Calder. <laughs> the ball bounced off Jackson Calder. It bounced the uh, right off Jackson um, Jimmy <laughs> Cameron's foot, and it went to the line. And it was just so quick for him, and he didn't need to go for the second effort because it went over the line anyhow. So morning to the home here at Seaford. Absolutely, Simple and Cameron's just kicked his second. 
We love something from nothing, and that's what it was. He was looking for the little toe poke over to Jackson Calder. Jackson Calder couldn't quite get down to the ball. He was well held, but uh, Cameron, with the speed, was able to uh, to chase after that ball that he kicked off the ground. And, uh, well, put it this way, folks, he wasn't able to. He didn't have to get another foot to it because it rolled through for a, for a sausage. 32 points the... is the margin in short pass. It is. It's all over Red Rover. So, it's been a fantastic game today, thanks to TV Magic, a fantastic sponsor of RPP and the match day sponsor of Seaford. Sorry. Oh. Sosovich going back there and making sure that Aaron Walton's snap is cut off. Cut off. Three for a point. So 7 18 60. Or actually 7 17 59, it might be actually. 7 18 60. I was right the first time. Morning to 14 7 91. We played 14 and a half minutes in the last quarter. We're live here thanks to TV Magic. Of course, our other great sponsors, Eliza Meats and Ray White Frankston and Solar Heart. And I think I missed one there along the line. I'm sure oh, you know Oh, it gets a handball off. Only just. Umpire had the whistle up to the mouth. Ball met by Susovich. It's a tussle between Broomhead and Susovich. Met heavily was the defender there by Mornington. Only to be chopped off. By Bird. By Bird. Bird is the word. <laughs> he's, been, <laughs> he's been very good today. Bird is the word. Vossi, I just uh, just wanted to mention too, uh, I, it is very, very clear to me that they have missed Ravenhall today. Ravenhall was swapping with Broomhead um, in the forward and on the ball. They have absolutely missed Ravenhall today. Uh, they've got no one to look to to go um, to kick their goals. He kicked one uh, very early on in that uh, in that first quarter. They have missed him today. That, yeah, well, he was the one that went off the ground in the, late in the second Correct. quarter. Correct. Very, very late in the second quarter, probably a minute, a minute or so before half time, and mm -hmm. yeah, with what we think is a dislocated knee, but we we haven't got that confirmed, so we'll try and uh, get some sort of information for you. <laughs> that was a, a yeah. Well, he's, he, he's just cramping a bit there, I think. Uh, Lucky Sasovic. He's lost his uh, he's lost his right to uh, the the uh, being the heir of Sasovic. Yeah, no, Stone. he's on he's on dishes duty, that's for sure. After that display. And that haircut, disgusting. Oh, great mark taken. Fantastic mark taken, in fact. It was a scrubber-looking kick and Lux of Fortune going down the throat there of, uh, of sorry, of, um, of McLennan. McLennan's been quiet today. He's quick to go back. He's going to waltz in from about 25 out. Oh, and just shanks it. Absolutely shanks it. Has been the story of Seaford's day. 7-19-61 plays Mornington, 14-7-91. Some of all have beaten Lang Warren, so Lang well, Warren's first loss for the season. My boy, oh boy, wow we. And a draw in the Karingal chelsea game. I reckon we get, I reckon we might try and get Josh on next week. What do you reckon? Yeah. Are we, or, or we either get Josh on or we get... Um, nah, no, 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 the, no, the uh, we, uh, no. Um, oh, Wiggy? Wiggy? Yeah. Yeah. We might get um, the Snake and Wiggy on just to uh, give us a... A uh, quarter by quarter recap of uh, of what took place down at uh, Somerville Rec Reserve because what a display that would have been. It'll be interesting to talk to John. Maybe we might be able to get John after the game uh, here at Seaford to uh, discuss what unfolded today. But uh, the game has well and truly been won here by the Mornington Football Netball Club. 14 7 91 plays Seaford 7 19 61. Seaford have thrown absolutely everything they have in their repertoire and Mornington have answered back in every single way possible. And it is because a footy like that, Herbert had gang the ball, tackle, an absolute gang tackle. Bold, they hunt in numbers. Bold tackled Herbert and then Speedy tackled Bold, yep. his own teammate. Absolutely, because he knew that he had a hold of yep. his opposition. So what do you do? You meet both of them and bring them both to the ground. There's a hand pass over the top of Mornington looking to go forward once again, and they go down the line towards Cameron. Jimmy Cameron's got it. He turns around and he goes in short. He's looking for Jackson oh, Calder. That's kick. a poor kick. That's poor kick over the head. Two two kicks in his last minute or so. That he's yeah, just turned true. the ball over both times, Jimmy. He'd be disappointed with that. Kick out towards half back. Mark taken there for Seaford. It's been taken by Loney. Seaford know they're running out of time, so they're trying to hurry up. But unfortunately for Seaford, when they do so, they tend to turn the ball over. So they need to be accurate at the same time as speedy. Pardon the pun. Quick to play on is Zarnecki. Zarnecki looking for so, yep, for Tekel. Ball punched out of bounds. I'm surprised you haven't finished off that plate of food. No, I'm done. I'm full. 
too much bread. Got risotto tonight. I need to save room. Oh, Max would love some. No, risotto. no, can't eat human food. He's I know, a, I know you can't, but I'm saying he'd, he'd well, love he to. Would. So do I, though. My beautiful Canadian cheese and kisses. She makes the meanest risotto. I don't order risotto when I'm out anymore because of her quick kick out of that stoppage. It's that good, is it? Yeah, it is. It's sensational. Ball being marked by Kane. Kane quick to bring the ball back in. Maybe, maybe you can maybe you can bring a doggy bag along next week for Craig and myself. And <laughs> Won't last a week. Won't last the night. There's a kick towards half forward, Cameron. Oh, that was good oh, play smart. by. Oh, it was really a, smart. It's a good oh. attempt to play there by Calder. Cameron did get the ball back, and now Mornington going into the open goal, but missing on the left hand side through Crank. And Mornington up to fourteen eight ninety two play seven nineteen sixty one maybe he knows maybe it, maybe Ash could make it, make it Friday night or Saturday <laughs> morning then you can bring it for lunch next week. <laughs> Crank heard Zarnicki come running. He knew he didn't have much time and just shanked that to the left. See if he's quick to bring it back in. Just another rubber kick. Only well, luck's a fortune there because it's being marked by Doyle. Doyle with a little toe poke, poor kick, two-on-one competition to be spoiled, pushing the back. Mornington with a free. Jeez, Lux of Fortune there. I wouldn't have thought that was the way that the cookie was going to crumble. Not in that contest anyway. Poor delivery back. Lucky not to be paid 50. Jake Smart with Smart the ball. with the ball. Bird is the... There's a quick kick off the pack inside, attacking 50. Ball comes back. Contolder... Put some forward pressure oh, on him. He, he put the he put the hand the, in the back, which made the uh, opponent there in Doyle drop the ball. And what's the umpire giving here? The umpire is going to say, "Is it a ball up or a free kick?" He's called time off. I think it's a ball up. We're into time on now. Yeah, but umpire's called time off. We're in time on. Just gone twenty minutes, twenty and a half minutes, in fact. North. And Macklin Rain to go up in the ruck. Macklin Rain, uh, sorry, North wins that one. Seaford looking heavy tackle applied, sling tackle, illegal tackle, free kick going to Seaford. They need to quick up, pick up sticks here and move the ball quickly. What side of they ground are they going to go to? They're going to go to the railway side ground, opposite side of us. Only to be, oh, ball's gone out of bounds in the full. Mornington to bring it back in. Another opportunity for Mornington here to go forward again. A high, high kick. Hospital kick. Punched over the line, out of bounds, Michael. So margin is 31 points here in favour of Mornington. We're 21 and a half minutes into the last quarter. Mornington are home here. It's just a case of what margin they... The 31 not, points. They'll bridge them, they'll, even though Mornington will go clear or see for their percentage in uh, the gap in percentage will be bridged a little bit. It's been Mornington, a free kick here. Still a little bit lower on percentage than what Seaford are, but they'll be a game clear of them tonight. Going Seaford's way for holding the man. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I won't repeat that one. I only heard part of it, and I'm not going to repeat it either. Grayson gets the ball over towards Herbert. Herbert might have thrown that over the top. Anyhow, they go forward here through the agency of um, of Lloyd. He goes towards half forward to Fisher. Fisher goes in towards the pocket. Ball going back. And Susovich just putting the pressure on there and now allowing Mornington just to go and take pack that ball through for a point. So Seif it up to seven goals, 20-62. Oh, the... Mornington 14 8 9 Seaford supporters just getting right into Susovich's ear. What do you reckon he would have had to say, Pete? I know you don't have a, mic a microwave, a microphone, but I can repeat it. Pardon? No, I'm having t boned Is he trying to take the boating out of our hands? Yeah, he... oh, well, mate, how could you not? How could you not? He has been exceptional today. He is the leader of the back six. Um, so for them to f perform as well as they did, how could you not? For me, it's between Speedy and uh, and we're gonna, talk, we're, gonna talk, we're gonna talk about this. Yeah, we do. We'll take a quick break after the uh, four. <laughs> no, we don't, sis. 
<laughs> says Peter Sussevich. <laughs> I personally don't think we need to either. Although he does get points taken off for that disgusting haircut. Oh, oh and Speedy. that's why Speedy almost needs what a courageous attempt at a mark that nearly gets his head ripped off. Mornington with possession of the ball and undisciplined football again from Seaford there. He came straight across the mark there, um, Adrian Speedy. Showed courage to get in front of the charging Seaford player. Mornington will go forward and they go with a high kick towards centre half forward. Macklin right at the back just knocks the ball down. Good tackle applied. The umpires is going applied. to ball the ball up in the forward pocket. 24 minutes played in the last quarter. Mornington have kicked four goals in this quarter and Seaford have kicked zero. So Seaford have actually kicked no goals to the left-hand end. No, that's true. That is true. Fun facts with Michael at 4.34. Did we start this game late? He was late. Yeah, 10 past, four, 10 past yeah. two he started. Yeah. That'll be why it feels late. 14, 8, 92, plays Seaford at 7, 20, 62. We've played, as you said, 24 and a half minutes on the Ray Wider Frankson scoreboard. She's well and truly frosty out there as Seaford in possession again. Look to run the ball out of their defence. Looking for that man there with the best haircut of the day. We didn't quite catch his name, but he's wearing number 76. I think it's just long. I'm not sure it's a mullet. It's just long. Two attempts, three attempts goes to Doyle. Doyle couldn't quite take the mark cleanly. Great tackle applied there by Mornington. Miller with the ball now. Looking at going through the corridor once again, as they've done all day and been very, very good at it. North. Looking for the P. Looking for Cameron. Cameron quick to get to his feet. It's a foot race. What's going to... Oh, it's been touched over the line. Jimmy Cameron, it's akin to Eddie Betts. When Eddie Betts gets the ball in the forward line and, and the defenders worries. The def Jimmy Cameron is so fast, defenders worry if the ball hits the ground. He will he will uh, really put the pressure on you fast. Oh, poor kick here. Cut off by Miller. And speaking of that man right there, Cameron takes a mark inside 50. He's going to add to what has been a fantastic day to him if he can go back and seal this one for the Mornington Football Netball the Club. There's no question. Well, exactly right. When you found out this morning that he was going to be donning the dog's jumper, Vossi, you were more than happy. He's a very good player. And and uh, he doesn't have been around Mornington uh, for, a, for a while, but he's back at the club. It's great to have him back at the club, to be he, perfectly honest. I, I'm sounding like I'm at the club. But he's at Mornington would say the same thing. It's great to have him at the club. Absolutely. He has a shot from 35. This to put the icing on a very sweet cake. He's done he it. He puts the finger up he and puts... says, I have put my third goal on the board and Mornington a 15,999. They're one short of the ton. Seaford a 7, 20, 62. We played 26 minutes in the last quarter, 27 minutes actually in the last quarter. And uh, we're live here at the RF Miles Reserve. And uh, it's uh, it's been a great day here, boys. <laughs> <laughs> it has been an exceptional day, Vossi. Um, and it all started off with a beautiful and very talented and competent uh, Federal Minister for Dunkley in uh, Peter Murphy. She's a beautiful, great friend of RPPFM and for the local area. What she's doing in what has been a short term, uh, well, only a new term for her is is short of exceptional as as Seaford looked to come and go forward again. Beautiful kick outside of centre. Ball goes about 20 out from goal. But once again, who's there? The defence of Mornington. And there's been a free kick for a push in the back after that delivery. Oh, no. There's been a free kick. Looks like it's going to to young Loney, is it? And no, Scully. Scully with the free kick now for Seaford. He's going to kick this ball from about 35 out on a, on a pretty decent sort of angle. Distance won't be an issue, but the angle. They've struggled, as you said, Vossi, to kick a goal from this end of the ground. Well, they so haven't. They this haven't, the so there you go. Do. Can Scully do it as he sets sail? And no, oh, can't. far side through for a minor. 7-21-64. Plays Mornington 15.999. Can they kick a ton? They're going to absolutely try. 
Well, Mornington are going to go home very happy tonight, and rightly so. They, they, uh, after a very disappointing first quarter, I think they got a rocket by Goosey at quarter time, they and, did. Uh, and they've been and Goose, mind, Goose, mind you, they needed it. Goosey kept them in for probably another three or four minutes. I know that doesn't seem like a very long time, but if you actually stand there and count. There it is. There Mornington, it is. the winners this afternoon by uh, 36 points. And you're listening and watching RPFM, the voice of Peninsula Football. We'll be back to wrap up. There's a quiet revolution happening on the rooftops of Australia. And at Solar Heart, we're proud to be leading the charge. One home, one family, one solar panel at a time. Helping smart Aussies make a real difference to the planet. Cutting their energy bills and connecting them to their smart energy future. Get smart. Get Solar Heart. More and more people with a taste for quality are shopping at Eliza Meats. Kevin and his lean team pride themselves on the finest cuts. From juicy steaks and roasts to high-grade mince and sausages, and Eliza Meats are the gourmet specialists. Inquire about Eliza Meats Spithire by 9787 4473 for a mouth-watering meal fit for a king. It's all at Eliza Meats. See our sponsor Kevin at Eliza Meats, 112B Mount Eliza Way, a station sponsor. Do you have TV antenna or reception issues? Need to warm out your TV or want extra TV or data points? Then talk to TV Magic, Frankston and the Peninsula. TV Magic are your local TV and antenna specialists. We look after everything. TV, home theatre, satellite, plus all electrical work. Visit us at tvmagic.com.au or contact Clint for a free quote on 0484 395 555. TV Magic. We make all your TV problems disappear. A station sponsor. Brighton Auto is your Bayside and Peninsula Automotive one-stop shop. This all-in-one award-winning Mitsubishi, MG and Sanyong dealership is also offering Holden certified parts and service. They have a huge range of new demo and used vehicles plus factory trained service technicians. Your proud RPPFM station sponsor Brighton Auto will also ensure your dream car is well within reach and kept in great hands. Why not visit brightonauto.com.au or find them at 67 Nepean Highway, Elsenwick, LMCT 10680. And as we welcome you back to RF Miles Reserve, let's just run through those full-time scores, boys, for you this afternoon. Thanks, Craig. Um, in Div 2, uh, the scores we have, um, uh, obviously, the, the big win by Mornington over Seaford here. Uh, Devon Meadows, 15-5-95. Rye, 8-11-59. Oh. Uh, no score through from the Pierce Style Crip Point game. Um, in the fourth quarter, Hastings, 8-9-57. Tyab, 3-8-26. Kringle and Chelsea was a 61 all draw, 9 7 each. Uh, and Somerville, as we mentioned earlier, 14 11 95. And Lang Warren, 11 11 77. In Division 1, uh, Frankston Bombers, 14 19 103. Asp, 6 6 42. Frankston YCW, the Stonecats, two words, 
13, 13, 91. <laughs> Mount Eliza, 6, 4, 40. Bond Beach, 13, 16, 94. Uh, Red Hill, 4, 7, 31. Dramana beat Rosebud, 7-11-53, 7, 7, 7 49. And as we said uh, a little bit earlier, Pines have beaten Sorrento, 12-7-79 7, to Sorrento, 11-8-74. Gentlemen. Uh, thanks for that, Craig. Oh, fantastic. Thanks to Solar Hart and around the grounds, Vossi. Uh, goal kickers for today, please, mate. I'll just give you the majors. Speedy kick four and Calder kick three for Mornington. James Cameron, he kicked three as well. And for the Seaford side, uh, it was two to Tim Broomhead and not one goal scored down to that far end of the ground, the left-hand end of your radio dial. No. So it's, uh, it, well, first quarter, Seaford kicked with the wind. They had a few shots in the pocket. Tim Broomhead kicked a great goal in the pocket, but they just weren't able to put a big enough lead out on morning to morning. Tomorrow always going to have, a, have their time with the, with the scoring end. They came out in the second quarter. Their attitude was so much better. Uh, their attack on the ball was so much better. And they put uh, their their opponents under the pump. And all of a sudden, Mornington were in front before you knew it in the second quarter. And, uh, yeah, so basically, uh, it all turned around in that second quarter with Mornington. They kicked, uh, what was it, eight goals? Eight goals, I think, or seven or eight goals in the second quarter. Yes. And, uh, and Super did not register a goal, so... Uh, very much, um, look, very much a happy day for Seaford to be down here. But in terms of on the field, uh, their seniors um, not a, not not their best display. They're obviously still in the top three, and they will probably end up there at the end of the year. But uh, I'm not sure whether some of will play Seaford later in the year. But obviously, Mornington now two games clear of fourth. They were two games clear of fourth anyhow, but. Being the fact that uh, some of a won today, uh, Mornington, I think, go back to within a game of the top, but Langrand's percentage is so far superior, I would have thought, short pass. Absolutely. And they, uh, I believe, uh, Lang Warren, a couple of games clear or one game clear? I think it's one. One game clear. I think so it's one. up the top of the table just seems to be a little bit tighter now. Uh, from my, from from what I saw today, Vossi, uh, Seaford came out very, very strong. There's no question about that. And uh, I, I thought Mornington might have struggled throughout the day. As I mentioned through our coverage uh, a couple of times that, I think Simon Goosey, of course, the the senior coach of uh, of Mornington Football Netball Club, he was uh, he was fantastic in just keeping them back. He had a little bit more to say, and uh, well, they turned the goal they turned a the goal on in in the first sort of thirty seconds, and that that set them up, I think, for the rest of the game. Uh, Seaford, I think, uh, were a little bit sloppy around the contest from time to time. They they didn't quite hit as many targets as what they they would normally, and I think that's because of the pressure that Mornington applied. They were savage today, Mornington bossy, and uh, and it's a credit to them. Seaford, of course, not coming home with the chocolates. It's been a brilliant day here at RF role at uh, RF Miles Reserve, and uh, well, it's a bittersweet end to what has been a, a fantastic day of football. Uh, we had Peter Murphy on, uh, the minister, uh, uh, yeah, the, uh, the the local member uh, for the federal government, and uh, and look, she's just what she's been doing around the traps has been uh, short of sensational. So, uh, thank you to her, and of course, Phil, uh, the the vice president from the uh, Seaford Football Netball Club. Thanks for joining us at halftime. Uh, we're going to be hanging around for a little bit longer. Uh, I think uh, maybe perhaps us. Uh, we're going to see if John Boy was um, John Boy was uh, going to be joining us to to talk about the no. uh, the game today between Somerville and and Lang Warren, but that's not going to be the case. So we might uh, we might wrap it up here from RF Miles Reserve. I see best on ground short. Pass. Oh, of course. Thank you, mate. Um, look, we we had a we had a a discussion off air. Uh, during that uh, during that ad break just then, and and for my liking, it was between two players in particular. I know we used to do our three, two, one, uh, but we tend to just go the uh, the best on ground at the moment. And uh, it was it was a really close call, of course, between Adrian Speedy, who kicked four majors today, was absolutely sensational around the ground, on and off the ball. He was able to drop forward, drop back, and uh, look, he was just he was exceptional today. So. 
well done to him. But uh, thanks to Kev and Eliza Meets, the, the match of the day uh, and the player of the day will be going to Lockie Susovich. Uh, his efforts down back, he's... <laughs> Oh, that just scared the absolute bejesus out of me. His effort down back, he's a soldier, he's the general down there, he's in charge of the six, he's part of the leadership group, and, uh, well, he was exceptional. So well done to, uh, of course, Lockie Susabich. And you know what that means, short pass? What does that mean? Possession is nine-tenths of the law. His father has that meat <laughs> right now. <laughs> and he can already taste the roast lamb. I hope there's a nice big shank on there. Well... Once again, listeners and viewers, uh, that is a wrap from us at RPPFM. Thanks. thanks to our sponsors. Of course. Um, to Eliza Meats, to, to TV Magic, to uh, Ray White Frankston, to Solar Heart. Have I missed any short pass? Progress uh, Signs. Progress Signs, of course. Yeah, that is all our sponsors, wonderful sponsors. We love you. Um, and always remember that this is where MPNFL happens, and it, it only happens on RPPFM. We are the voice of Peninsula football. See you next week. All right. It's a goal from 70 metres. Oh, there's a fire at the back. Fantastic. Something from nothing. That from Arna were pressing, pressing. You're listening and watching the voice of Peninsula football. The 200 gamer has put through the first goal of the game. Welcome to the out of the PFM. Footy coverage is where NPNFL happens. Uh, we're live on the radio on 98.7 or 98.3. You can listen to us through our app. Uh, two gentlemen who will be calling all the action this afternoon. Uh, short pass Kelly. And the man who might even be, and it's rumoured, could be on the short list for the presidency of Portland. So, so it's good afternoon to Michael Boss. Oh, it's on. It is on. It had to happen. Rocks back into sport on the Mornington Peninsula and Frankston. So all of a sudden, the margin is back to nine points. Another major, and he walks up to the crowd and says, how do you like that?